A very good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to a new episode of the Coaster Kings Radio. My name is Sven, and today I'm not joined by Alex and Sean, but I'm joined by three of our brand new members. So let's introduce them to you. And uh, how about ladies first? Hello, Emma. Hi, Sven. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Uh, pretty tired, but oh well, that's how it goes. Um, Emma, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, I'm from Chichester in West Sussex, down right in the bottom of the UK. Um, I work as a chef. I spend all of my spare time <laughs> pretty much at theme parks as much as I possibly can. I see. And favorite coaster? At the moment, uh, I went to Horton Towers this last weekend, so I think Alaska or 13 at the moment. Ooh, interesting, interesting. That is controversial. Controversial. Let's meet our second member, Kai. Hi, Kai. Hi, oh, Sven. How you doing? And hello to everyone listening today. What is your coaster experience, Kai? Who are you? Tell us a bit more about yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm Kai. I mean, yeah, that was clear. Um, yeah, from uh, Kent in the UK, so a little bit further down from Emma and uh, James, who you'll meet soon. Um, yeah, overall, coaster-wise, done a, a lot in Europe and also some parks in Florida. Number one is uh, Kanan, um, so lover mm. of all things Ghost Hour and anything that drops vertically. I see, that's interesting. And indeed, we have a third person in the room. Hi, Hi James. Uh, how are you? And I hope everyone else is doing well as well. Um, yeah, I'm James, I'm 19, um, and I'm from Reading in the UK, um, not too far out from London. And um, yeah, I'm actually starting a job at Chessington next week. So, <laughs> so I'll be working mm-hmm. a theme park, so uh, it's pretty fitting. Yeah. <laughs> Pick up Chessing. That's nice. So yeah, three members from the UK. So what should we talk about? Hmm. Well, guys, today we're talking about the best park in Spain. Um, that would be interesting to hear from us but not in this episode no today we're going to talk about the uk parks and we're going to do a little tour and see which ones are hot and which ones are not (laughs) Uh um Mm. so i myself have only been a few times in the uk and i only done three parks so i'll only be able to rate those but um, I have read and heard about the other park, so oh, I'm curious about um, what you guys think about those. So what we'll do is I'll have a little list, and then you guys immediately tell me hot or not. Is that good yeah. for you guys? Yeah, yeah sounds good. Awesome. Okay, let's start with a not so obvious one. How about Fantasy Island? Not. I would say, I would personally say, I think it's hot. I think, um, I think, uh, honestly, I think since Melors took it over, I think it's pretty up and coming. Um, yeah, I think it's been getting a lot better and they've been investing a lot more mm-hmm. lately. I mean, I haven't been personally myself, but I think it's, uh, it's one I'd love to go to for sure, but it's quite, it's on the opposite side of the country for me. So it's a bit of a track. <laughs> yeah, I agree with James. It, it looks hot. I haven't mm. been, and again, it's quite far, a bit of a drive mm. for both of us. Okay, so that's interesting. We'll dive a bit into that uh, later on, but I'll give you another one first. How about Blackpool Pleasure Beach? Love, 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 love. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I'd say a Blackpool hot as well. Yeah, I really like Blackpool. I think it's got. I think it's got quite a unique atmosphere that not really any of the other parks in the UK mm. have, so it's something a bit different. There's quite a lot of unique mm. rides there as well. What about Kai then? Not. <laughs> <laughs> Kai with his controversial opinion. Yeah, he's, he's very enthusiastic for the, at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame. Yeah, I just... Blackpool's uh, the best. Just, uh, I'll need to help him out a bit then. Uh, ha. How about Chessington? The best. Hot. Hot, yeah. Okay. Hot. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been on my list for a while Great now, park. but I... Great yeah, park. Yeah, when I go to the UK, it's not like the park you, you're really going for at the moment, I, right? So. I uh, mean, I guess because 
No. Because you're coming from another country as well, mm-hmm. it's not like the one with the big coasters. Mm-hmm. So I guess mm-hmm. that's kind of like... But it's it's kind of quite, yeah. you know, it's it's quite different to the other sort of main Merlin ones um, as well. So, so yeah, it's quite nice. It's definitely a visit. Mm. You've got to go. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'll, really I'll combine park. it with a London trip, I think. That should be possible, right? Yeah, it's it's pretty easy by the train. Um, mm. It's just, if, if you know where Clapham Junction is, it's literally a train and a walk from there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Um, well, another park that's easy to visit then, and that I did do, was Thorpe Park. Oh, man. Mm, that's <laughs> a really tough one. That is, like, uh, the hardest uh, one yet. None of us want to say not. But not. But also, don't want to say hot. <laughs> I've got, I've got to say not because even though I think it's got a good set of coasters, I just think, I just think unfortunately it's been quite neglected over the last few years, and it's really like kind of a shadow of its former self. I mean, mm. it's it's been my local, well, one of my local parks for for years, and um, mm-hmm. I used to go there since I was little. But mm-hmm. and they used to have really like. Uh, cool little additions like they had like a train which went to a farm and that was really cool and just little things like that and slowly they've kind of just cut away all of those extras so it's kind of just got the coasters which are good Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but doesn't really have like yeah much else to it anymore because it's kind of been cut back over the years Mm -hmm. yeah well i'm I'm gonna go hot just because the other two went not and i think someone's got to give the place a bit of love Uh, (laughs) (laughs) i think you know, James, you mentioned it's been a, a bit neglected in the last couple of years and stuff and maybe a shed of its former self, but we did give Chessie hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm going hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great, great lineup. Yeah. So some controversial stuff going on there, but I mean, they've got a wing coaster, an intimate accelerator, mm-hmm. a Eurofighter, a multi inversion coaster, a BNM invert. You can't be saying Fantasy Island is hot and then come in and give Thorpe Park not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it's not that I don't think it's I don't I think it's got a great set of rides. I just think I just think it needs a little bit more love mm-hmm. from the park manager. Yeah, it absolutely does. Um and that yeah, it's it's got a great set of rides. I mean, for anyone coming from abroad especially, it's a must do mm-hmm. because it's got probably I mean that and Alton Towers, it's probably the two parks with the best set of coasters mm-hmm. in the uk and it's yeah it's got some of the best coasters in the uk just um hopefully they start to invest mm-hmm. a bit more and yeah. and then hopefully it can kind of you know <coughs> rmc <coughs> giga coaster <coughs> sorry oh a giga would be so good <laughs> <laughs> okay. well no the 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 controversial thing is everyone seems to want an rmc but mm-hmm. I, i'm not sure how well, I think that would fit. Yeah, what did you guys want at Thorpe? <laughs> and then it was quiet. Tough one. <laughs> we don't want anything. No, it's fine Nothing, just as it it's is. Not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what. I don't know what I think would be good. It's a really weird one for them. That kind of because their coaster lineup is actually mm. pretty solid. That. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of think something not coaster would be good, but then they did try the whole dark ride with Darren Brown Ghost Train, and that obviously wasn't very successful for them. So, so it's quite a, a difficult one. Um, so, James and Ember, do you want the money to go Fancy Island since that's a hot park? I mean, no, but um, I, no. you know, I, I'm I'm going to go and say if I if I could get anything. At, at Thorpe Park, yes, I would pick a B&M Giga. Do I think that is realistic? No. Do I think a B&M Hyper is realistic? Yeah. I can see it happening. Um, I, I don't know if you guys know, but when, when there were plans for a 2020 coaster at Thorpe Park, the sort of brief that was given for it involved, um, they wanted it to be really reliable. Uh, they wanted it to mm-hmm. market itself, so a record breaker or something like that. And the engineers mm-hmm. specifically stated that they really like working on the B&M coasters at the park. So for me, yeah. if they built a B&M Hyper just bigger than the big one at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, that's kind of ticking the boxes. Do they have any... I mean, I don't know. Do they have any issues with height restrictions? Because obviously Heathrow mm. is quite nearby, so I don't know how that affects um, it with the, the planes and everything. I think the answer is, like, kind of, because there's no set height limit. 
each um, set of planning is kind of judged on it in its own in its own right. But there are areas of the park where there are set height limits. So I think like the kind of loggers leap area, can't, you can't go over a hundred feet or something like that. Okay, fair enough. But obviously they've got stealth, which is quite a tall coaster. Mm-hmm. So it's clearly not that big an issue yeah. if you can if you can have stealth, which is mm-hmm. so I'm thinking is second tallest in the UK. I should know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me also say not. Um, I were for me it was a bit a too thrilling park for me personally. Like, I really like thrill coasters, but I also like to do stuff in between. And at the time, the Logger's Leap was the Flume Ride, right? Yeah. Yeah, th- that one was still yeah. there. I also did the Slammer. So that was like, oh, they'd I been there, done that. I love the Slammer. That was the best <laughs> ride there. That actually scared me. That's the only ride to, like, ever actually scare me. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it was an interesting okay. ride, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah I was happy to have angry birds there to have something for for families or, or oh god that's <laughs> you're the first person I've heard to say that yeah well it, it, it the, even the 4D <laughs> cinema was like I hate 4D you might have heard that in a previous episode but I'm really not a fan but here I was like finally something calm in between those heavy thrill coasters yeah yeah, uh, yeah. It, um the the thing with it is is that uh, Chessington is about half an hour down mm-hmm. the road from yeah. Fort Park, and so that is why they really kind of were like family park, mm-hmm. thrill park, and they and Thorpe Park is such a thrill park. Yes, everything there is really full on, really like mm-hmm. thrilling mm-hmm. and and brash. And Chessington's complete opposite. It's so relaxed and such a, a chilled out atmosphere. Um, and I think that's why. And that's why Chessington slowly have got rid of all their thrill rides. Obviously, the last one, Rambus's Revenge, leaving uh, end of last mm-hmm. year, and, and the Thought Park pretty much have no family rides. They do have a couple, and they have bought a couple, um, even in the recent years. But, you know, in general, it yeah, is a thrill park. Yeah, and I would park. just say as well, what I think is is they, um, before, obviously, Merlin took it over, it was owned by... Two, two sads I think that's how you pronounce it anyway two swords two um, swords yeah sorry. <laughs> and um, yeah and back in the day as I was saying because I used to go there a lot when I was a kid they did actually have a lot for families obviously Loggers Leap which is now closed mm-hmm. um, they used to have the whole Octopus Gardens area which was for children and the Canada Creek Railway over to the farm so obviously they did have a lot of family stuff but they've mm-hmm. kind of just slowly moved across to the thrill market which mm-hmm, is obviously mm-hmm. what they think works best for them. Um, but, but yeah, I agree. It's not the most well-rounded day out for, for families. It, mm-hmm. You kind of have to go with a kind of a group of people who all just want to do thrill rides all day because it's, there's not much to have a, have a break and have a relax, really. So, um, mm-hmm, so that's, mm-hmm. that's the thing. You've got to kind of be in that mindset for it. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite funny. As you mentioned, there used to be a lot of family rides at Thorpe Park. Well, Thorpe Park really in the early days was a family park. And I think there's an argument as well that Chessington was... It was never a complete thrill park, but it used to have a lot of thrill rides. You know, as I already mentioned, Rambus's Revenge. Don't forget when Vampire first opened with the original um, Arrow Trains, that was considered a, mm-hmm. a thrill coaster. Um, uh, Samurai, which Samurai, is now at Thorpe yeah. Park, oh. yeah. that used to be at Chessington. So... Yeah, so a lot of, you know, it mm-hmm. almost switched over, which makes sense because the park with the zoo should yeah, really be the family true. park. And I guess that's been a more of a, I don't know, because obviously Samurai, I think, did it move across quite a long time ago? But um, I think, yeah. yeah, more since Merlin have t- taken it over, they've been going more in that family, more and more in, for Chessington in that family direction. Obviously, they're getting the new drop tower mm-hmm. for next year. But I think from what I've seen, it seems like it's quite a family uh, drop tower I'm not yeah, entirely sure yeah it's, it's going to be but... really really tame oh yeah. good maybe I'll like it <laughs> 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 and do we know who uh, will build it the manufacturer um, I do know that yes oh, okay but it's a secret <laughs> yeah it's um, it's FBF the, uh, SBF, SBF, SBF oh, okay. Visa, yeah. yeah, okay, then it's I don't know if we're allowed to say that, but well, it's exclusive now <laughs> if, we, if we're not. So, I guess is it similar to the one they've got over at Paulton's then, the drop tower? Yeah, I think sure. it's the same model. I think okay. it's the same model. 
So it's not the new... Has anyone done that one? I was about to say, it's not the new uh, Zamperla splash drop tower. Uh, did you see that? No. <laughs> no. Um, if you guys check out the latest trip report from Chessington, you will see some construction updates from mm-hmm. the ride on coastkings.com. <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, we went back to Chessington now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, how do we do that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, so there, there's, a, I feel there's a lot of love from you guys for Chessington, but what makes the park so special then? There's lots of reasons. There's so <laughs> many reasons. I think a lot of us grew Convince up. Convince me to go. Okay. I think a lot of us grew up going to Chessington. I think Chessington was one of the first big parks I went to. Um, I fell in love with Bubbleworks and obviously the Vampire, mm. uh, and just the, just the place mm-hmm. in general. It's, it's so great. Um, mm. I'm just totally sad that they moved Bubble Works and it's now the Graffalo, which is just as cute, but it's just not the same. Mm. And um, what I used to love as well was um, when I was little, the, they had Beano Land, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. was quite good fun. Oh, they've, yeah. cha- they've changed it now to Wild Asia, but um, but that was that was always good yes. fun for Beano for, Land yeah, when you're a little kid. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just quite a I think quite a feel good park. Um, I mean, I, I think it just works quite well in the way that they've got the animals as mm-hmm. well. And the themed areas just blend together quite nicely as well. So so it's, it's kind of like very, um, like sort mm-hmm. of smooth the way the way the areas blend together. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good day out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, Sven, you know, you mentioned... Um, previously not on the podcast that when you went to Thought Park Mm -hmm. you thought that the themed areas there was no real like start and end to them it just kind of it's just like oh this is this this is that and yes there are areas but they don't really like there's no clear Mm -hmm. start or finish to them I do have to Um, say one area that I liked because of the style but that they could do more with it was the um, the stealth area I, I like the the summer beach feeling, and it, it it has a name, but I can't come come up with this the style name. How would uh, you describe it? Amity. Yeah, Cove. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. I like the style, but it, they could do more with that, though. Well, Amity is a classic example of um, just things being neglected a bit. When when that area opened um, twenty years ago now. Mm-hmm in 2000 yeah it was amazing there was fire effects there was way more theming than there is now there was a clear start and finish to it everything Mm -hmm. looked great but it's just yeah it's 20 years old and they haven't put the money into properly maintaining it and that's Mm -hmm. not to say that they haven't maintained it because they have i mean even this year there was some some things added and changed with it but yeah Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a classic thor park example that things don't quite get the complete love to maintain them that maybe they should Mm -hmm. I'd say part of my problem with Amity Cove was back in the day, I thought it was a great area. But just going back to what you said, obviously, like Angry Birds Land is their family area, but they Mm -hmm. put it right in the middle of Amity Cove. So now Amity (laughs) Cove is like split into two. And then you walk, you go into Amity Cove, then all of a sudden you're in Angry Birds Land. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you're back in Amity Cove. And that just doesn't, it just doesn't blend well. So it's a bit mm-hmm. confusing. It's kind of like, what's going on? There's all these <laughs> kind of like, and then you've sort of got the Darren Brown ghost train, which is kind of like sort of in that Off area side, as well. Yeah. And it's all, it's all a bit mishmash of themes. Well, which is ghost train's supposed to be in Amity's dockyard, right? Like there's the dockyard, yeah. which mm. is like in Amity, but it's not Amity. It's the dockyard. And Darren Brown's ghost train is in the dockyard. Okay. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I've been and I See? didn't know that. See, this, this is, is where bit, you learn. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. No, it's interesting, yeah. But, um, yeah, when I um, was there, Darren Brown's Ghost Train wasn't there. Uh, but you oh. guys mentioned that it wasn't a big success. Although people I heard from mainland Europe said that they really liked it. So what's um, the deal with it? I think... So when we say it wasn't success, we mean the attendance of the park wasn't increased in the year it opened. Okay. So from like a marketing standpoint, from like a financial standpoint, mm-hmm. it was a failure. Okay. The reviews were just mixed. Some people hated it. Some people loved it. Um, which is the same for a lot of stuff. But when we say it was unsuccessful, we mean in terms of 
um, mm-hmm. the 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 attendance numbers and and the, the the financial success of the ride. But um, to be honest with you, that's not that, that happened with the swarm as well. When they opened the swarm, they they um, they didn't get an increase in attendance. Okay, but aren't they like on a certain level of attendance, and that it's hard to get over it now? Or is that just my uh, my impression? I know what you mean. The park has a capacity, so it's not like they could smash it every day. Um, but yeah, it doesn't like the attendance could be higher still. Okay. I think I think what I'd say is I think because they've restricted themselves so much to the thrill market, mm-hmm. I think that does limit limit how many people are going to come in because it's a very specific market of people mm-hmm. who it's very niche who's who's actually going to want to go so and then as you s- said kai all the families are going to go across to chessington yeah. or equally to we, we've got another park which is near to me legoland mm-hmm. um which i'm sure we'll yeah. get on to but um you know there's there's a lot of option for the families to go to and i think that does restrict thought park to get those numbers up a bit as well Although I'll also add that every time I've been to Thought Park, I've barely ever queued, apart from when I went for Saw's opening week. Um, But I've never been in a big queue. I've always walked on to rides. Um, It's always really quiet at Thought Park, unless it's the weekend. I was going to say, I tend to go on weekends, so it's normally... Whereas I don't. Yeah, you always go go on the weekdays. (laughs) Yes. Yes, I do. Skip the lines. (laughs) Yeah, so Thought Park midweek, um, especially in, like, September or, like... Even March. Mm. But that's because it's cold. May. That's because it's, it's freezing in the UK. The so. Yeah, it's, it's dead. All of the parks midweek are dead at the moment, though, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That might be of another reason, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is that. Yeah. There is COVID. <laughs> I thought we might go. We went, we went uh, that was, what's that, 22 and a half minutes, and, and it has been mentioned. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> But um, okay, but let's continue. Then we had Chessington, we had Thorpe, yeah. and then there's the third Merlin Park there, Legoland. Hot or not? Not. <laughs> hot, a hundred percent hot. I'm gonna say hot, but I haven't been in like seven, eight years, okay. so I don't really know what's changed. Um, but I think I think if you're a Lego fan or you've got kids who are a Lego fan, then I think it's great. I think if you're like an enthusiast who wants to come over and try out the UK parks, then I'd probably say not because it doesn't really have, you know, it's got all the mm. Lego mini- miniature world mm-hmm. and all of that sort of stuff. But in terms of like the attractions, it doesn't really have anything that special. No, not at well, all. I mean, I, I want to say I'm not hot or not in these based on me. I am sort of doing it in general for the, the, the market as well. Oh, but, I beg your pardon. I've been doing them on me, I'm afraid. So. <laughs> just, I love Lego, so I'm like, um, hot, 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 you know. It's, it's just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, Legoland's great if you love Lego, but Legoland's also great if you love waiting an hour-long queues with a bunch of with a bunch of kids and just seeing everyone walk past you in fast track. <laughs> mm. I'd, I'd, say, I'd say you're spot on. And I, the last time I went, um, I don't know the ride type, but I really enjoy these rides. And... Um, it's there. It's called Squid Surfer. They've also got one mm. called um, in Port Aventura called the Magic Fish. Mm. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what the ride type's actually called. No, I have no idea. <laughs> but they're really low capacity, and that kind of feeds through with all the rides at Legoland. And I think that had like a yeah. 70, 80 minute wait just for that sort of filler attraction. And that's kind of a theme with Legoland is it's always packed. Um, it's quite chaotic, and that's kind of like what puts me off it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Legoland is literally like the most visited park in in the UK, and yet has like one of those lowest capacities. That's interesting. Like, a lot of the rides are very low capacity. What they added, um, not this year, the year before, they added a Vacoma Madhouse, which for capacity they're amazing. So that was a really good move. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe they're starting to and and they've got Flying Theatre coming next year. I think. Yeah. So I think they are trying to add them capacity attractions. I love Madhouses, Hopefully. by the way. So do I. They're the best. Except, uh, I don't even know its name. What's the Fantasyland one? Feng Shui Palace. Fengju. Fengju Palace. Except that one. <laughs> <laughs> that one's so bad. You're crushing James's heart. <laughs> I'm not. Cru- you're not crushing my heart. I ah, mean, okay. Um, I mean, I don't think it's. I don't think it's the best. But 
Um, that's, that's mainly down to the pre-show, which is uh, mm -hmm. pretty the awful. Pre -show is um, but, but I would say a spit off topic, obviously. But uh, Phantasialand, my the the other one in the Chinese themed era, Geister Riksha, is is significantly worse in my opinion. <laughs> it's bad, but it's better. Ooh. Mm. I, Controversial. <laughs> the thing is, there's one scene that I really like, and that's the pirate ship or the ship in the Geister oh, Rickshaw yeah. scene. Yeah. If it works, because last time it wasn't working, but I like how the ship moves and then the animatronics on it yeah. move, and that's really cool. But then there's also those weird-looking puppets uh, everywhere in the ride that makes it a bit less appealing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think I think when I rode um, Geister Geister Rica, I think it's called. I found it. Um, yeah, it's a bit naff, but I feel like that's part of the charm of it. It's <laughs> like, yeah, it's pretty bad, mm. but typically it's, it's kind of the same with Hollywood tour. Oh no no no! Now, now you're stepping on my toes. I I'm a big <laughs> Hollywood tour fan. No, I I love Hollywood tour. I really really love Hollywood tour, but it's it is a bit naff. Oh my god. <laughs> It's 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 naff, but it's charming. Whereas I, I find yeah, Ge okay, Geister Rickshaw is not charming. <laughs> no, well, I, I, I prefer Geister Rickshaw. Like, has anyone I've, actually ridden what? over Hollywood tour? Has anyone yeah. actually ridden the one at Legoland? Uh, no, the I haven't. But, uh, no. No. no, yeah, yeah, no, no. no. I am going in a couple of weeks, so I can uh, write a comprehensive review. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the next next uh, podcast i'll update you guys okay but just to finish off the story of hollywood tour i mean the first thing you see <laughs> is the animatronic of alfred hitchcock with his bull sitting there like a drunk man <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah it's a bit too much for what's me. not to love that's that's immediately setting the tone for the rest of the ride it's a bit of a shame though i don't know if you guys have heard but um hollywood tour's pretty much been shot all season um yeah it's <laughs> having a great time yeah, over there. <laughs> um, but yeah of course they had a bit they've had a bit of an mm. issue with uh, i think the station leaked so which then oh. went into the fantas the phantasma dinner show theater has become flooded so it's oh. been a bit of a wow, problem i didn't know that yeah it's been a bit of a nightmare and the ride's been out all season so that's not great mm -hmm. for me <laughs> have they just drained it and gone like this is a problem for another day I think maybe. I mean, what I was hearing through the grapevine is it might be something to do with budgeting that they can't really yeah. necessarily w afford or want to put the money to fixing mm. Hollywood Tour at the moment. Obviously, it's one of the park's less popular attractions. So, but it was it was in the pipeline mm -hmm. to be killed off anyway, wasn't it? I have heard that um, it is, but I have heard that there's. From what I've heard is that they want to do the. Uh, redevelop the China area first yeah, as a priority. Yeah, I think that's first. Makes yeah. sense, especially because with, it's close to the hotel. Especially Crazy Bats. Yeah. Mm. So, mm. so I think Hollywood Tour probably has another four or five years in it, maybe. <laughs> I have to admit, though, and just... that each time I go to the park, I ride it just because I want to have a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I go to cool down. When it, like, if it's a really hot day... Um, like it can be a fantasma. Mm -hmm. I go for the AC. Okay. <laughs> and there's and then on sit the, down. There's usually no wait too, so. Mm. Yeah. I go for the AC. I stay for the King Kong animatronic. That's the top <laughs> tip right there. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I think they want to spend their money on something else, like I don't know, fly maybe. But uh, let's fly back yeah. to the UK. Um, of course, yeah. To Legoland. Uh, I've never been to a Legoland, actually. It's always been high on my list. But I think I want to start with the one in Denmark. And uh, it's, it's amazing. It's so That's cool. That's the best one. That is the best one. Plus, of, of all the Legolands, I think the one in the UK might be the most expensive, too. Or is that just my impression? Uh, I don't. I actually don't know. It was more expensive than um, Legoland Billings, definitely. Mm. And plus, for us from mainland Europe, we also have the conversion to take into account. So, yeah. But the Danish yeah. krono is um, ridiculous to the British pound. Um, we had so much money. We took so much money with us because the conversion, if I remember rightly, is is really high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But um, I think we also need to jump back to Blackpool before we continue with the other ones. 
Um, <laughs> and Kai, Maybe. you immediately said not. Explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, personally, I don't enjoy getting beaten up. Like, it's just not high on my <laughs> things I'd like to happen. Really? <laughs> so, um, as a general rule... Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's kind of what their rides do. Even Icon? <laughs> well, I haven't ridden Icon, so... Oh, uh, okay. Ooh. That'll explain it, you know? That will explain it, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll make it... It's, like, high on my list to go and mm-hmm. ride Icon, so... And I'll throw, I'll throw a controversial opinion in here as well. I actually think that Icon, for me, is my favourite coaster in the UK. And I think Ooh. a lot of people actually hate on it. And I, for me, I find it very underrated, but a lot of other people don't like it. And I can I see why. But Icon's kind of s- simultaneously overrated and underrated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've got the that The people vibe. who yeah. love it overrate it. The people who hate it, like, overhate it. Yeah, so I don't. I wouldn't go around saying I think it's the best coaster in the world or the best coaster in Europe because I don't think it's that. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a really good, solid coaster, and I think it's really good fun. And I think um, it's kind of. I, I think it really works well for Blackpool, and I think it's what they needed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it worked really well as an investment, and so that's kind of. Uh, and it's a good, fun coaster. Obviously, the launches are pretty weak, but that's. Pretty much the same across the board with the Mac Mega Coasters. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. Um, what about you, Emma? I mean, obviously, I love Blackpool. It's one of my favourites. Um, I would also maybe say it's the best park in the UK, but I don't know if I'm just pushing it a little bit. Kai's face then was just, you know, <laughs> um, I just think it's got a bit of everything. I think it's amazing. Icon's great. Um, like you said, it's a bit weak. Um, but I, I do enjoy like the Grand National where you get thrown around. I do, I do, I, I really like my bones inside my body, but at the same time, you know, it's fun to get rattled around a bit sometimes. But yeah, Emma I likes Blackpool. to shake it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I visit Blackpool quite a lot, so I do really love it. Okay. I would go, I would say as well, I think it is my favourite park in the UK as well. Um, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> not, not impressed. Um, yeah, I just, I mean, I haven't been in quite a while now. It's been maybe maybe two years since I last went. But for me as well, I think it's got the best set of dark rides in the UK because mm-hmm. obviously UK isn't very strong for dark rides. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But I really like, just mm-hmm. personally, I really like the Wallace and Gromit dark ride. That oh. has kind of a soft spot for me. So um. That's such a good ride. It's so cute. So what do you think, James, are like the top three Pleasure Beach dark rides? Like, top three. Do they have three? <laughs> there is definitely three, but there's only one that's worth actually raising. You know, it, you know it's rough when when <laughs> the best the best part for Dark Rides in the UK... Does it have three? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Wallace and Gromit is, is... I think it's really good. I really like it. Um, but the capacity on it isn't that great, which kind of is a bit annoying because it always has quite a long queue. Um, I can't think of... I guess if you're including Valhalla as a dark ride, but I wasn't particularly uh, going to do water, that. It's a water ride. It's a water ride. Yeah. yeah You've so, got the lovely Alice in Wonderland ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is terrible. Lovely. Um, you can't river caves. Yeah, lovely you can use very caves. loosely there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ghost train. Gosh. Well, yeah, the ghost train. Oh, ghost train. Oh, the ghost yeah. train That's is That's the good. original ghost train as well. The first mm-hmm. ever made, I'm pretty sure. The ghost train is good, yeah. So I put Wallace and Gromit, the ghost train, and then There's they've this got the river caves as yeah, well. That oh, one. The, yeah. Yeah, take the river caves. Ri- right, okay, hang on. Didn't you say you don't like Hollywood tour? <laughs> Isn't river caves just like a worse Hollywood tour? River caves is worse than Hollywood tour, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but we're rating the only three rides in Blackpool, so you know. <laughs> and, then, and then they've got, I don't know if you call this a dark ride, but they've got the... Um, the impossible fun house type thing, mm-hmm. which has oh, that little madhouse <laughs> weird thing at the end, which is really creepy. Oh, mm. I, I didn't wait for that. <laughs> Whoops, well I done. missed it. Good job. <laughs> it's, I think, what do they call it? Is it the haunted swing or something like that? I can't remember. Um, it's really, it's really weird. You go. That sounds interesting. I haven't, I haven't done it. You so they have like this impossible thing, which is like kind of like a walk through with all these different illusions, and mm-hmm. then you get to the end, 
And it's so weird because you just go into this room and it's just got these chairs like randomly and it's like take a seat and it doesn't really make much sense like what's going on. <laughs> like, it's you just the swing, isn't it? So yeah, you wouldn't, but you the, wouldn't the know it was there. around it. So it makes you feel well, like so you're like going upside really down. it's like a really bad madhouse. Yes. Yeah, it's like a bad version of a madhouse. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the, hold the bad version of a madhouse thought. And let me take you over to my opinion on which park in the UK has the best <laughs> arc rides. Alden Towers. And yes, I'm not saying they have good dark rides. I'm just <laughs> saying it's the best of a bad bunch. Hex? No, absolutely not. <laughs> oh. But but actually, Hex was voted the best. Hang on, I had it written down. Mm-hmm. Uh, where's it gone? Honestly, I agree with Best Kai indoor this attraction, one, Silver, is Hex. So. Yeah. Like, I understand no, I Kai's opinion. Hex. I like, think Hex is really good. Yeah, and even the the comparison that he makes is the, like the dark rides in in Blackpool are okay, but the 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 only two then in Alton Towers are a level higher for me too. I mean, when everyone talks about Alton Towers, they seem to forget that CBB's Land exists, and I and I know it doesn't really. Like, no one goes there except for the child. credit. Um, I did when I went there. I the day. got the credit. <laughs> I don't have any. Um, <laughs> But, but what what I'm saying here is, so your top three there were um, <laughs> Wallace and Gromit, right? Which I think is, in my opinion, I think that's the best okay. dark ride in the okay. UK, hands down. Okay, fine. The, okay, so then you, you picked Impossible for its swing. <laughs> And then we have, no, I um, thought we were just having to shove three together from yeah. Blackpool. That we were just having to remember what was there. That's what I thought. Yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. Was. But but then <laughs> but then okay. So towers have hex, which for me is the best arc ride in the UK by like a long, long, long way. And then okay, there's Jewel, which is probably better than Ghost Train, right? Or not? Yes. Yes, actually. Yeah. Okay, so Jewel's better than Ghost Train. And then okay, so for third, you could. <laughs> Well, maybe we could be sneaky and say Gangster Granny the ride, even though no one's ridden it. Or we could just pick anything out of CBBS and just be like, "This is." Speaking so. of the dark rides at Alton Towers, I was sad that Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was oh, closed. Yeah. Yeah. I was happy to yeah. ride it, but then I was like, "Well, just shut down one of your dark rides, and then when it rains and pours, people will just wait in the rain for coasters, I guess then but this yeah, this is the whole problem with the u k parks in general we I mean we were having a chat about it the other day as well, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, for some reason, like we just want to shove everyone outside if yeah. the weather's if it's rain, if it's snow, if it's hail, if it's a storm. <laughs> You know, on in the whole, there's not really anywhere to shelter or there's not really much in the way of indoor attractions. And that's kind of something that I'd like to see improve in kind of the UK industry because, yeah, it's it's a shame. Like, I went to uh, Paulton's a few years back, mm-hmm. uh, which I think is a really lovely park and it's got all the gardens and everything like that. Yeah. But, yeah. but it started raining and there was nowhere to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just sad because it's kind of like you either put up with the rain or you just leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you are right, but I, I I don't know why that is. I mean, it's more expensive to build things indoors, isn't it? And do indoor attractions um, make money? Do are they popular? Mm. Well, they might be when it starts raining, but I think as a general rule, yeah, maybe they are when it starts raining, and that that's it. But what about places like Alton Towers? They have a sea life centre. So obviously when it is raining, you can go in the sea life centre. I really Mm -hmm. enjoyed it the other day. It's only small, but but it is a good one. Also, um, of course, there is a dark ride that you can do uh, to stay safe from the rain in Blackpool, and that's Valhalla, of course. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> not, not that that would help a massive amount <laughs> no but what it's I very was, similar to what I was going to say about Blackpool is for someone from mainland Europe it is definitely one of the most mm-hmm. interesting parks in the UK because it has this vibe of being at the beach and, and being like a yes. broad broad walk park is that the a good description broad walk yeah um, and, and we don't really have 
ex- except for in in Scandinavia maybe, but otherwise we don't really have those that type of park, and it it feels like stepping a bit back into history. And even if you get shaken yeah. a lot in those woodies, I I I under I feel the history when you walk there, and I really appreciate that. And then also when you see Icon right next to it, which is brand new, uh, well, used, uh, already two years, sorry. Yeah, no, it looks brand new. Though, but it looks know, brand it's a new, new ride. Yeah, and, and again, it's indeed not the most thrilling coaster. For me, it's more, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. But I, and, and I don't understand why people would call it one of the best coasters in the UK. Sorry, James, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's no, your opinion. Point but it, it it also depends on taste because it's it's not one of the most thrilling coasters and people really like that. Um but uh that's true. so so that's why for me Blackpool was was definitely a highlight of when I visited the UK parks. That that's an interesting point. Um but to us, so it we, you know, if we're trying to kind of mm-hmm. discuss, you know, best parks in the UK. Mm-hmm. And so let's say you hypothetically managed to visit every single park in the country mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you had to say, what's the best? I, I think at that point, the fact that Palacio Beach is on a beach would become slightly irrelevant because there are so many parks by the beach in this country. Mm-hmm. But it's the biggest one of them all. Yeah, you know. And it's it also is. very historical. So, I mean, you've got a lot yeah, of roller okay. coasters there that are actually listed buildings, so they actually can't yeah, touch yeah, yeah, them. Yeah. There's a lot of... You know, mm-hmm. the Big Dipper's, like, either just coming up to its 100th birthday or just past it. I can't remember which I, was one. It, but uh, I think it might have been this year. Yeah, possibly. Um, but they're all really old, you know, and that's, again, it's a huge piece of history. Any enthusiast would be, I mean, I love it. There's lots of plaques there. There's lots of information. Um, the Grand National, for example, holds the record for the number of uh, most riders that ride it naked. So <laughs> that's, you know, that's obviously a selling point for Blackpool Pleasure Beach. So... <laughs> I don't think it is. I don't think Big Dipper is a hundred yet because no, it's three years. It's, because we've I've just looked up. It's um, the scenic railway in Margate. That's the. I think it's the hundred. That's birthday. a hundred. Yeah. I thought year. it was near. I know it's near. Yeah. And I've just ha- I've just gone on RCDB actually. It's um, 1923. Yeah, Ooh. and the scenic <laughs> railway in Margate is the oldest roller coaster in the UK. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I really like. We've got quite a lot of those sort of seaside parks. We've got obviously Margate. We've got. Uh, another one called Adventure Island in South End. Yeah. Um, obviously, yeah. Fantasy Islands on the coast as Great well. Great Yarmouth as well. Yeah, Great Yarmouth, Pleasure Beach, Joyland as well. So, we've got quite a lot of those sort of parks. And I think that is something that's quite unique to the UK and brings a lot of history with it as well. There's a lot of old roller coasters on the mm-hmm. seaside. Mm. And then there's Infusion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's not even, let's not even waste middle, our time. It? <laughs> talking about infusion. <laughs> okay, just next. Skip. Next. Um, next is Tum 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 Polton's Park. You already touched on it, James. You say hot. Mm-hmm. I say hot. Um, I say hot, but it's a very specific market. And um, if you're coming to UK and you want to ride the big coasters, then it's not for you. Um, but I think. I think in terms of how they've been doing recently, and especially with the new area for next year, Tornado Springs, I would say probably it's one of the best theme parks in the UK as well, in terms of the areas that they do. I think it's really high quality. Um, and yeah, it's, it's nice. They've got the gardens as well. They've got animals. It's, yeah, it's just a nice day out. But, um, but yeah, it's more aimed towards families, and that mm-hmm. is successful for them, though. Okay. What do you I'm think, I'm going to say... I haven't been, just to clarify, I haven't okay. been. Um, man. <laughs> uh, a heart so not hard. to crack. I'm, I'm really, like, torn here. How old is the park? Uh, I think it's quite old, but they only started getting rides, like... It only got on the map in the last like five years you know people yeah, that's only what started I really like yeah i first went when i was about seven okay okay so it's been there a while I'm not saying i'm old but it's been there <laughs> when, a while. when you went then was there much there because now yeah. it's like pretty much a oh so it's it is like 
yeah, it was still the zoo. I mean, the stinger was there, which was like one of the first ever roller coasters I went which on. Which is it's the caterpillar now. It's the caterpillar now, so it's yeah, still okay. there. Um, okay. Should we ha- hang on? Let's have a look when that opened then. I think it must be quite old, but obviously, as you said, it's not really been sort of one of the major ones in the UK until recently when they brought in the Peppa Pig world and then now Lost Kingdom and then Tornado Springs. They've really started ramping mm-hmm. up the investments. Mm-hmm. I um, think it could be quite an up and coming park, to be honest with you, in the UK. Um, yeah. It's definitely something to keep an eye on. I mean, I mean the, the new coaster looks pretty cool. I think it's definitely the park which is investing the most out of all the UK parks at the moment. It's it's doing mm-hmm. it's doing the most, yeah. Yeah. So it opened in 1983. So it's okay. pretty old, yeah. As old as a lot of the parks in this country. You know, I'm going to say... I haven't been, so I don't know, like, the vibe of it and stuff. So I'm just going to mm-hmm. say hot. Um, it, like, yeah, as, as James said, the investment's been really great. <laughs> and the, the trajectory that the park is going it seems great. You know, there is still mm-hmm. some bad stuff there. There's, like, no deny. There's still a lot of, like, temporary, like, kind of funfair rides that are agreed, just sitting there. Agreed. So give the park time and absolutely hot. Right now, okay, maybe I was on the fence, but I'm sure if I had actually been, I could tell you mm-hmm. hot. So, yeah, hot. I agree. And the, the problem is there are some rides which stick out like a sore thumb. On the whole, it's got really nice, the- like, themed areas. But then you do have, like, their log flume, which is, like, just a fun fair log flume basically sitting yeah. in a concrete car park. And that's kind of... And, like, similarly, they've got, like, a wave chair swing ride, which is also kind of not really themed. So it's kind of... what What is newer is really great. And uh, some of the older stuff you know, is kind of looking a bit more run down, but hopefully mm-hmm. they'll address that and kind of bring it up to the standard of the rest of the park. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe they need to stop putting new in and go back to the old now. Yeah, I think definitely. Um, I think that's probably a good idea, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still happy to give it hot. I think hot with asterisks. Emma, have you been? <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, I want been. was again oh, one yeah, of my of first ever said, theme parks. <laughs> um, when I was really, I must have honestly been about seven, and I remember being like, "This is the best place on earth." <laughs> um, there's like giant dinosaurs. There's like these huge slides, and the stinger was just. I mean, it was hail. It was like in the middle of a hailstorm, and we just kept going round and round on this roller coaster, and I came off with like bruised face because of the hailstones. And it's not exactly an aggressive <laughs> ride. Let's just put it that way. Um, no. But and then I went back recently, probably just as they opened. I want to call it the Cobra. I'm pretty Cobra, sure. Cobra, yeah. Yeah. I, so I went on the Cobra, and I haven't been back since. Um, and obviously, we're going to go when uh, Tornado Springs opens. Are you sure? Happens. Because Cobra opened in '06, so I'm, I'm just making sure if that you haven't been that long, or if you're on about Flight of the Pterosaur, which was 2016. No, I haven't been. No, it was the Cobra. Literally honestly, to, yeah. Wow. So okay. I fair went, enough. So it's been um, a while. Um, years, years, wow. years. Well, okay. uh, 14 years ago, <laughs> precisely. So, wow. thanks for but, making me feel old, Kai. <laughs> but I think if you went, if when you when you go next year, you'll see a lot's changed since then. Um, I mean, I haven't been for about three years now because I am waiting, obviously, for the new area as well, which yeah. was supposed to be this year. That's kind of what's happened across the whole UK industry is mm-hmm. like everything that was supposed to open this year has just been pushed back to next year. Whereas obviously mm-hmm. like in, out in Europe, Efteling, they still open, Max and Moritz, uh, Tripstrill still open the new coasters, Phantasialand still open the new coaster. So kind of like the UK theme park industry has kind of seen a bit of a standstill this year and everything's just been put on hold. Every park in the UK except the best park in the UK Chessington, which still opened <laughs> all of their new stuff, except the new pirate ship, but still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the other one we have as well, so it's kind of moving on to a different park, but uh, Flamingo Land, they've mm-hmm. got a new uh, oh, yeah. Colossus clone, so to speak, um, and that's been put on hold as well, so. I mean, that was a very interesting move from their part. Like, okay, they're getting a new coaster, but why put one that's already in the country and that people know for years? Because it was cheap. (laughs) And also, Flamingo Land is quite far away from Thorpe Park, so I've never been because it's actually on the other side of the country. And they they are technically, like, slightly different because it's the revised version. It's, like, the better version of Colossus. Okay. 
But I have heard controversial things about that because obviously I think it's is it Alta in Italy, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which is the same as the one they've put in at Flamingo Land. I've heard controversial things saying actually this coaster is worse with the lap bars and whatever. And I, I mean, really? I'm not a Colossus fan no, of the I first place, so so I can't think of it being any worse. So <laughs> I'm hoping that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking then of Flamingo Land. What are your opinions about that park? Uh, it's another one I haven't been to. I was hoping to go this year for the, the 10 inverter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was going to be the first visit. Um, I mean, I've heard it's terrible. Like, I've heard <laughs> not a good word about that park. It Whoops. looks okay. And, you know... It looks good for the, the counter. The day, it's almost worth going because they're going to have 10 creds. Yeah, I was going to mm -hmm. say, isn't it the park with the most coasters in the UK? I think it's tied with Towers. Mm -hmm. Well, Blackwell yeah. Pressure Beach has got 10 as well. So. Yeah, okay, yeah, so it's a tie between them. Three. I, was gonna, I was going to relate it more to sort of uh, UK's version of Energy Landia, but it's not really, because they're not really expanding that much, but kind of like, similarly, a lot of things that just kind of seem to be kind of dumped there. Flamingo Land <laughs> has the zoo as well, though, right? Yeah, well, that's why it's called Flamingo Land because it's got the flamingos. So, <laughs> so it's, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? But no, I think I think um, I think it looks like it's worth a trip. I haven't been either. I'd say it's worth a trip. And obviously, if you're into getting all your creds and everything, mm -hmm. then it's a hundred percent one for you in the UK because it's got a lot of coasters. Mm -hmm. But I'd say a lot of those coasters are a bit weird. Like oh, they've got the Zampella. So what's it called the Zampella the, Voler the Voler, thing, yeah. mm -hmm. which is just Ouch. those things are just horrendous um, so it's kind of one to go to but also I'm not really sure how it would actually be like when you get there yeah if you want us to hot or not it I'm going to not it but if you're a cred whore then it's hot for you <laughs> but um, how many coasters does Blackpool have? Ten. I don't agree. <laughs> and is, are you saying ten? I mean, I had a complete mind blank, but is ten including, like, Steeplechase being three different coasters? Yeah, so the it's other day coaster. I wrote a blog about the top ten coasters at Battle Pleasure Beach, so um, you're including Steeplechase with this whole ten. So Steeplechase is, is one cred. Yeah. Why? It's the it's last one in the world. It's terrible. It's but not why is it one cred, cred and not three? It's, it's the only last one. Because one. <laughs> ah, it's, one, oh, it's yeah. one roller coaster. Mm. It's one terrible, terrible roller coaster. But why Dueling is it one? Coasters. It's three Unless they have tracks. unique layouts. No, no, no. But they're the same. <laughs> or in the same land, in the it same area. Matter. with the sa It's the same. They're all the same. There's no difference. I understand what you're saying. If you got one of them tracks, chucked it down the road, I'd consider it another cred. <laughs> <laughs> but it's... Then there's that. And then another one. How many coasters is Grand National? One. One. That is one. Because that is definitely one, right? Because it's Mobius. Isn't, yeah, isn't that? Yeah. So you end up on the other side of the station. Yeah, it's all Mobius. like connected. So, so that that's a different. thousand percent one. I can understand your argument for steeplechase. However... Is the experience you get any different on the different tracks? It's a different view. <laughs> it's not though, is it? Yes, it is because but you have I, I either you have you're in the middle of the race, you're on the side of the race. I would say it's three. I'd say Steve Hill Chase is three. Thank Grand you, James. Well, one. my coast account's just gone up. Which is no, it moves. hasn't. It's one cred. <laughs> if you, I don't know if you guys do your coast account manual or if you use the website coastaccount.com, but no, coastaccount.com actually counts it as three different creds. That's mm -hmm. because oh. coastaccount.com is made for people who, who just want to make it higher. <laughs> and there's any way. Oh, oh, Air and Galactica. Oh, that's two creds, yeah. <laughs> no. I can what agree on that, though, Kai. Though? I'd say what is controversial yeah. is coastaccount.com is now counting the Zampella disco coasters. Oh, get in the bin. 
So you've got Cobra at Chessington and Edge at no. Portsmouth Park, and now no. the last two credits. No, absolutely <laughs> not. No. I, I also do see the argument for for that, but mm-hmm. if they're not, I don't think they. I I wouldn't. I don't personally count them because I don't mm-hmm. think they no. are. No, no, they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. But we have officially made in a statement. If you count them, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> if you count them, then that's your opinion. You but can we directly do contact me on Instagram, <laughs> and we can discuss this in high volumes of detail. <laughs> but, Please, but the, the website counts it, and I'd also say, yeah, but if the you're, website is fraudulent. If you're looking to get your creds in the UK. Down in Maidenhead, there's a a little playground which has a a really strange like child's play equipment, and on, it's counted on ghost account. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a butterfly. Like... Okay, everyone, Laid- Maidenhead Park, hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a playground, but you could get your okay. ghost account up. <laughs> right. So. If this website is counting a piece of play equipment as a cred, <laughs> should we consider it a reputable source for whether Steeplechase is three or one cred? We do have to say, though, that the, the website gives you the option to, to filter and to be more strict on your counter itself. So I think mm-hmm. it's an undefined, right, then? Yeah, it's undefined, and it does. It leaves it open to okay. you, so you can have your own personal coast account. So yeah. you don't have to include them. But obviously, I think lots of people wanted the discos in there, so mm-hmm. I think that's kind of what happened. Um, I yeah, guess their I'm argument not... that it, it's it's in the name. But what I would say is what I don't understand about the discos is they're counting the big discos with the hump in the middle, but they're not counting the small discos like Avatar, Airbender, right. Blackpool. Mm-hmm. That doesn't right. count as one. So I don't really see where where do you draw the line with all of this because then you could just start including more and more things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You, you, know, could. you could get to the point you include Griffin's Galleon at Chessington as a coaster. <laughs> yeah, you could. <laughs> and... and you know, I think one one thing um, that I want to say that is controversial, where I've just come out and, like, really heavily bombarded you for considering Steeplechase as three creds, I believe that X No Way Out, X, and The Walking Dead The Ride are three different creds. Nah. I No, I agree with you in some aspects because they're all very different experiences. They might all be on the same track, but... It's still the same track, yeah. My my argument is that the ride experience is completely different, A, and B, yes, it's the same track, but the track is used in a different way in each of the three different iterations. So we've just added four more counts, Chris. <laughs> <microscopes. laughs> which is great. I'm, I'm so happy about this. Because, but... because X No Way Out was backwards, and featured like heavy stopping and stuff on the block sections. Like it stopped, all effects went off and it would carry on, okay? X was forward trains, ran the complete circuit just like a normal coaster, straight through the blocks, everything else. Walking Dead the Ride is again normal trains, but then the block sections are used again in like different ways. So like you stop on one of them and you like roll back and then roll forward and then roll back and forward and then you stop on the other ones. So yes, the track is the same. The experience is different, and the track is used in a different way. But it's still the same coaster. But (laughs) but what I would say is, if we're saying Steeplechase is only one, then, like, when you go out to Spain, you go on Stampeda, they've got the red and the blue train. Yeah, it's one, it's one. No, it's one, it's one. No, those are different. Those are really different. And what about Joris? But the layout's Joris, the same, Water right? And Fire, the layout's not the same. They've got different as, layouts, uh, though. Stamp- oh, is the layout actually different? Yeah, yeah, Because the, at some point, the coasters cross each other from opposite sides. Yeah. And also, in the beginning, there's, even already on the lift hill, I, I, I think it's the red one that has this weird transition to the lift hill. It always makes me wonder, how is this even possible? But... <laughs> So there are some differences there, yeah. Okay, so if the layout... So my thing with dueling coasters, if the layout is the same or it's a mirrored coaster, one cred, like if it's mirrored, you know, different layouts, fine, two creds is different. Unless you move that one a bit further away in a different park and then it becomes a cred. <laughs> yes, yes. 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna start deducting loads of coasters from my coaster I think account, so I'm just gonna just gonna ignore it. <laughs> I think next time we need to invite Alex. I'm sure he'll have plenty of opinions on our decisions. We could do a whole podcast about what's oh, a credit yeah. and what isn't. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Maybe we should. Yeah, I think it's coming. I think it's coming. Um but um if we were at Flamingo Land <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I think, Emma, have you visited uh, Flamingo? No, I was actually going to go this year as well. Okay. Um, but obviously, because of everything's happened, cancelled mm-hmm. a lot of trips this year. Um, okay. Yeah, um, I don't know. I've always wanted to go, but I think it's just because it's another one off the list. Other than yeah. that, I think not. It's not really high up on my list. It's just mm-hmm. one I think I need to go to. Okay. Yes, well, I think it. It will be interesting for you guys to visit it next year and then to tell us more about if it really is a horrible experience or not. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, one park that has intrigued me because I had to do a presentation about Wales once is Oakwood. Uh, I haven't been. Has anyone been? I've, I've been to Oakwood. Has anyone else done Oakwood? No. Nope. N- no, mm-hmm. so it's just it, me. It okay. all depends on um, you then, James. It all depends on me. On I'm gonna be brutally honest. <laughs> and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say not. Um, it. I mean, I had a bad experience. I went and it was pouring with rain, um, mm. but half the park was closed. Um, yeah. A speed was okay. closed, but not due to the rain. It was just broken, and apparently that's a common occurrence there. So I didn't get on the park's one of their main coasters, um, and then. The treetop coaster was shut as well, so I didn't get to go on that. And then I did the, I think it's the James and the Giant Peach coaster, which is like, Mm -hmm. I think it's a Pinfari or something. And that wasn't, that was not a good experience. And then (laughs) there's Megaphobia, which which is good fun. It's good fun. Um, And I think that's pretty much, in my opinion, all the park really has going for it. How about the water ride? Is it drenched? Oh, drenched. That looks insane. I'd say... No, the only thing with the park is it's all been a bit controversial with their sort of how how safe is the park, how like the ride reliability is not great. Yeah. And they've also had quite a few different uh, incidences where things have happened. So that's the only thing I would put in there that obviously and drenched is uh, supposedly it's OK now and they've got the over shoulder restraints, but before it did have quite a serious incident on there. So mm-hmm. I didn't actually go on it because it was raining and I didn't get, want to get it more wet. <laughs> so I can't judge. I can't well, give an opinion. If you're Oakwood already wet, looks like I a mean... Knot to me. Like, it looks like a knot, but drenched looks insane. Like, Tidal Wave at Thought Park, for me, is literally one of my favourite water rides in the world. It goes Chiapas... Splash Mountain at, um, in Orlando, and then Tidal Wave. I just really love Tidal Wave, so maybe I would like really love I think, Drenched Kai, as well. I think you'd really like it, because it's literally a vertical drop on a water yeah. ride. Um, it looks cool, but I was too, <laughs> too wimp to go on. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I think they also have a little log flume as well. Um, but equally, I didn't do that. So, James, I, mean, I don't know what you're expecting. It's Wales. It rains every day in Wales. so <laughs> It's impossible to catch a nice day of weather out there. But what I will say is the, a park, which is more of a farm zoo type thing, is near to Oakwood. It's called Folly Farm. Um, it's a little park, and it's just got like a, a fairground section. Um, mm. But I have heard there's some talks of... Maybe they're looking possibly at a coaster or something. I don't know anything for sure. But just through the grapevine, I've heard something. Okay. But it, that's a nice little park out in Wales as well. But once again, it's kind of, um, it's kind of ruined by the rain. <laughs> um, <laughs> if we could just lift it up and take it anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. And I think the weather does have a big, especially for me, I find that the weather has quite a big effect on my enjoyment. Mm-hmm at the parks so yeah so maybe i just didn't have a great experience at okra because of the weather but um it's quite out of the way uh there's not really much you know it's kind of the only proper big park in wales so there's not really much else around there and if you're coming for sort of a uk road trip or whatever you've got to go a lot out of your way just to get to oakwood so yeah you do mm-hmm. yeah 
I think it's about four or five hours from me, and I'm sort of closer to the Chessington Thorpe Park, mm -hmm. uh, Legoland, mm -hmm. those parks. Yeah. So the Merlin yeah. parks, Big but up. we forgot one. Big Merlin Park so far. Alton Towers. Hot or not? Hot, absolutely. Like a thousand percent hot. Best park in the UK, no questions asked. <laughs> I know I said it was Chessy, but that was a joke. That's like <laughs> <laughs> third. Um, um mm, I again was there last weekend. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say hot because I mean you can't not say hot because yeah. of the amount of roller coasters, the amount of fun you can have in one day is ridiculous. Um, although my only argument was, I mean, the second time I've been in six years, Wickham Amherst closed four years, six years um, again. So I didn't get to ride Wickham Amherst again. Um, and I think the operations there, there was four major rides closed when we wow. arrived, and Oof. we were like, you know, that's that's a huge chunk of our day completely close it can be um, luck though can't it it's one of them things like towers overall is pretty good you will normally get everything open unfortunately you know they're not in control of these things you could turn up and the engineers are probably tearing their hairs out as well that like their four major coasters have died but i think what's interesting about well, the way the merlin parks work and that might be why it seems like the reliability is worse because instead of, well, I mean, I'm comparing this to Europa, but at Europa, they have an engineer specifically assigned for each ride. Yeah. Um, so that's why the reliability out there is so good. Whereas in Merlin, they just have a team of engineers for all the attractions. So yeah. if there's a problem with multiple attractions, then their workload becomes so high. And that's kind of, you know, that's not, their fault obviously that's just how it is but i think um yeah that's comparing it to europa park which is like obviously like mm -hmm. <laughs> top and top in yeah. europe but that just it's yeah um but no for to me, be fair I, sorry you go okay thanks <laughs> um i would say for me alton towers i'd say it's hot um i would just say i'd like to see a bit more in the way of filler attractions because uh, i think it's got really good coasters um and the rapids is good and they used to have the flume but obviously that's gone oh. um so i just like to see more in terms of oh, Wickham, man, different things to do obviously there's the sea life and now they've got the dungeons but that is an upcharge but i do think it's a beautiful park obviously they've oh, got yeah. the gardens and the actual towers are amazing as well so um so yeah i think it's got a lot of heritage to it and it's definitely probably the uk's must do theme park yeah if you had to do one Orton towers and even though you guys don't think it's the best park in the country, right? Even though you both said Blackpool's the best park in the country. If, okay, let's say Sven had never been here before. He had never done any of the parks. And he could only go to one park. Then it would be Alton Towers. Yeah. So you've essentially just proven me right that it's the best <laughs> park in the country. <laughs> well, I, it was, I think it was my first park in the UK indeed. Um, like, especially I was younger and I didn't have that many uh, coasters on my counter yet. So uh, mm. it was a, one of the highlights to visit in Europe. Uh, and especially my first visit that was back in 2012 was really good. We had two days. First day, Oblivion was closed. But then on the second day, halfway through... We all, all of a sudden we passed by the castle and we heard the chain and we were like running as crazy and uh, <laughs> we did it yeah. twice in a row and it was my first dive coaster and I remember the first time we went down and we got off we were we were speechless because <laughs> we had never done anything like it in the meantime I've done did quite it some scare you? yeah in the meantime I, I'm I've done more dive coasters so now it's it's different when I wrote it last and time. But, um, and where does Oblivion rank for you in terms of dive coasters? Um, I think it went down to the bottom still. What the hell? <laughs> because, because, as I said, the last time I wrote it, I, it was not at all what I remembered. It, it, it felt a bit disappointing. There was also no uh, smoke in the, 
the dive section in the tunnel, uh, yeah. which which does which does something uh, to a ride experience. Does, yeah. And also, if you look at the other dive coasters, they either are better in in length or in in mm. elements or in theming. So, but but length and elements don't matter. It's a dive coaster, not a looping coaster. But the it's dive very short. Is what matters. It's very, very, yeah. very short. Who cares? And then you sit in, the, you know, you sit waiting to get off for about ten minutes as well. So it's great. But so if I, I want to drop tell, down, then I'll go on a drop mm-hmm. tower. <laughs> I got you quiet. Oblivion now, Kai. is the best dive coaster in the world. Fact. <laughs> it is the no. best dive coaster in the world. Absolutely. It was the first one. <laughs> and is the best one. <laughs> but you, Kai, you've ridden um, the one in Bush Gardens, Tampa, Shakra? Shik- no, I, 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 I haven't yet. actually done okay. Shakra, no. Because no. I hear a lot of good things about that one too. But uh, I've done Yukon Striker, yeah. and that's the one with the... Oh. That's the real dive. You know, I mean, to be honest with you, you or... striker. There is an argument. Like in my head, I I do think like mm-hmm. my oblivion complex is threatened by you striker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I I like the atmosphere around the ride and the concept of the dive and, um, uh, as I said in 2012, I really liked it. Um, and mm. and Alton Towers as a whole was a great experience. Last time I went was 2018, it's a great and park. it was Scarefest. Uh, I liked mm. the mazes, but we had a very bad weather as well. Uh, not only rain, oh. but also wind, and most of the rides closed down the whole time because of the wind. So that was very annoying. And um, luckily, I had already visited the park, so I knew where to go to start my day with. Um, um, and luckily we got to ride Wickerman because it was the year of opening, so it would have been pretty yeah. bad if we were not be able to ride that ride that day. Uh, and the second, we had a two-day ticket, and the second day it was pouring even more, and we, halfway, halfway through we just quit because it wasn't funny anymore, so yeah. we left. Yeah, yeah. This is a classic, like, Alton Towers-based question. What is everyone's order? Like, what's your order of how you, like, start your day at Alton Towers? Because for me, it's Smiler. I, like, I walk straight up to Smiler and I wait for it to open. Straight on Smiler. Then I do Oblivion. Then a Hex. Then 13 or Rita, depending what's got the lower queue. And then I do the other one. Then Sky Road over to Forbidden Valley. Nemesis Galactica. And then walk down and do Wicker Man. You know, unless, like... Unless there's a, a, something like one of them goes down or has like a hour long wait or something, then that's like the order I try to follow. So everything you just said is the complete opposite of what I did the other day. <laughs> so I ran straight to Wicker Man. It was closed. Um, yeah. And then I was like, okay, Galactica, Nemesis. And Smiler, I did, a, I did last, actually. Um, okay. Because it said five minute queue, ran along, waited an hour. So that it's very wrong there. But, you know. It's completely backwards to what you just said, but that was just because I was so desperate to get on Wicker Man, so I went straight there, and unfortunately so, it was closed. To be fair, yes, you've done the complete opposite to me. However, we still are following a similar route, which says mm-hmm. to me that both our routes are good, we just want to do them in a different way. Oh, mm-hmm. and the Skyliner was closed, so I had to walk, which absolutely sucked. So, To be fair, I don't mind walking through the gardens, though. Because it's really yeah, they're quite play. nice. Yeah. yeah, I see James smiling because he has a whole different route. <laughs> I can't tell you honestly. Mm. I don't have a route because okay. I haven't. It's not a local part to me. Mm-hmm. I haven't been for quite a long time. I haven't done Wicker Man, so I don't have a route. I can't. I think when we went, we went to the Smiler first. But I'm just going to throw my controversial opinion out there and say I do not like the Smiler. I. <gasps> <laughs> I hell? don't enjoy it as a coaster. Um, when I did you ride it, though? What time of the day did you ride it? In the morning. That's a terrible time to ride the smile. No, it doesn't matter. It, There's no it, bad yes, time to ride that, that beast. 
Oh, it so totally does. I will be brutal. I think it's kind of, for me, was style over substance. Obviously, it's got the record for the most inversions in the world. And I think, yeah. for me, that was kind of prioritized over the actual comfort of it. I found it a bit jolty and quite it disorientating. Is a little bit of, yeah, well, that's the point. Yeah, but that's, I'm not that good with that. Um, and I know, <laughs> I know a ride that Sven likes. This is completely off topic, but the Sky Scream at Holiday Park. Mm -hmm. And I recently went to Holiday Park and I hated that. And I found it so disorientating. And I know Sven really likes it. Mm -hmm. But that just shows you, like, I'm, I don't know, that sort of ride where there's kind yeah. of a lot of twisting and stuff. I, I, I don't, for some reason, that's not really my sort of coaster. <laughs> that's honest, yeah. But it's it's um, interesting. Uh, I I the Smiler. I also like it, but a bit like Kai, I really like Gerstlauer Infinity coasters. Um, yeah. But for me, the best coaster in the UK is still Nemesis. Bam. Okay. I think I think <laughs> Nemesis is third for me. So my number one in the UK is the Smiler, then the Swarm, then Nemesis. James. You want to know? I don't. <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't. I'm going to throw another controversial <laughs> opinion out there, which people aren't going to like, but, you know, um, I prefer Nemesis Inferno to Nemesis. To be fair, though, this is becoming increasingly oh. not that controversial. <laughs> like, I think Tell both are amazing, but more. Nemesis is better. <laughs> how, um, how on earth? Can Nemesis Inferno yeah, yeah. be better yeah. than Nemesis? <laughs> it's not, but it's still great, but it's not better than Nemesis. I don't know. I don't know. Just... I don't know. I, I'm, it's, it's a gut and feeling. Also, I would say it's probably something else quite controversial. Oh, but, but I'm going... I'm enjoying lately... Sorry. I'm, lately, I'm not enjoying B&M inverts as much unless I'm right at the front. I know. Um, because I don't, at the back, you can't see anything. Um, and when I was at Trips Drill, I did the new Vekama STC. Mm -hmm. And even if you're at the back, you can still see around you. And I like that. Whereas on the B&M inverts, if you're not at the front, your view is really obstruct obstructed. All you can see is the seats in front of mm -hmm. you. And for me, that makes it less enjoyable. And I didn't ride Nemesis at the front. I only rode at the back, whereas I've done Nemesis Inferno at the front. So maybe, for me, that's something that makes a big difference. Um, that's interesting. Because for me, Nemesis, I like on the front. And then Inferno on the back. But I just quite like to see where I'm going, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. No, I, I, I didn't get it. Mm. I didn't get Nemesis Inferno. That was my problem. Like, you start it's with the little the twisty clones. thing, and then you go up the lift hill, and then Th kind of nothing the, happens. The, the pre-lift is good. What do you mean nothing happens? You go through I four don't... intense spine-tingling inversions. <laughs> <laughs> but not really memorable. I think mm -hmm. I think I think Nemesis Inferno they could have done more with the layout, but I think mm -hmm. um I, I quite enjoy it. I think it's quite mm -hmm. punchy. I, love I it. don't I don't know I don't know why, but it's for me that's um that's kinda just the way I find it. Uh, I think for me the best coaster at Alton Towers or one of my favourites, I thought I, re I think I really enjoyed thirteen. Mm-hmm. I really like thirteen that. is great. Thirteen is really good. Um, but why? Tell me why would you put on your first drop a break? <laughs> uh, because it was over speeding into the second lift, causing serious block, section, block sectioning issues. That is why, Sven. Disappointing. <laughs> Not a yes. fan of trim brakes, then. It depends. Like, it doesn't bother me on Skyscream. Because otherwise, you know, it would be too intense. But 13 is a family coaster. Like, why slow it even more down? Do you want to know something interesting <laughs> about those brakes? Tell me. So 13 can either run with nobody on the train or minimum 18, I think. I think 18. There's no in-between. Mm -hmm. Is it 18? Okay. I think it's... There's, like, you can't have 17 people 
um, and you can't have 18. So you can have 18, you can't have 17, but you can have zero. And the reason is because um, if they turn all the trims off, the speed is fine. Um, but the second you add weight to the train, it needs the trims because otherwise it overspeeds. Mm-hmm. But it needs enough people so it doesn't, like, so it actually makes it round with the trims on. Okay. So it's that's all a bit it. confusing, but that just leaves me the question why wasn't it designed better to not <laughs> be so complicated? <laughs> it's an intimate. What did you do? <laughs> But the but whole you know. section of that park was a bit disappointing for me. Oh, really? Oh. Rita, the, I remember staying at the pub, and uh, they were like, oh, yeah, Rita is really cool. And then we rode it, and I was like, meh. Rita is... Rita is... Rita's it's good, okay. but it could have been better. Whoa, hang on. This is a really sad moment. I went on Rita again at the weekend, and uh, for me, I'm not so good with the speed, so I was absolutely mm-hmm. breaking it. Um, and they were like, oh, row one, please. And I was like, I am not sitting on the front row. My sister was like, it's okay. It'll be fine. Um, it was crazy. It was so intense at the front. It was just, I mean, it's Rita not as fast is a good itself, ride. But Rita it was great. Is a good ride. I really loved it. And actually, it shot back up, um, you know, my favorite sort of rides. It was mm-hmm. really, really good, especially at the it's front. It's better than Anywhere else. I think hmm. for me, because I've done um, the new Intamin, um, what are they called? The new Intamin launches. Blitz coasters. I don't, Blitz coasters. I've done Taron and I've done Tiger. And I think for me, both of them are miles above the two we've two mm-hmm. Intamin launches we've got in the UK. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, of course they for are. For the UK, but, but that's you know, not we because haven't really of the launch. Got much going for it. <laughs> Taron like, would be better if the first launch was hydraulic. And like, I, think, I know that's not really possible, but let's say hypothetically it would be a better ride. So it's not better because of, the, because of the first launch. Okay, the rolling launch, yes, is like one of the best bits about the ride. But if we're talking, you know, it's, yeah, Taron's better because the layout, not because of, like, of the launch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I think the launches, the hydraulic launches, we've got the Stealth and Rita, the actual launch is good. I just think both of them lack much depth in their layout and that's that's it and i'm comparing to other coasters abroad now which is probably not representative but (laughs) you know (laughs) but um the other coaster i quite liked um is and this is the only flying coaster i've done Mm -hmm. well before i go to fantasia land again but (laughs) um air i haven't done it as galactica because I don't know what it's happened. Not any different. The, the VR complications. No, the VR was amazing um, when it was working. I managed to do it a couple mm-hmm. years ago with the VR. I did I it. I did it. I loved it. I thought it was great. But, but, uh, but with, even without the VR, it's amazing anyway. I think it's a really good coaster. I think it's just a solid coaster. And, um, I don't yeah. really rate it, you know. For What's me, inter- I don't. Go ahead. I was just saying, for me, I don't. I don't look for um, for sort of any records when i ride mm-hmm. coasters that doesn't really affect me i just like yeah, no. being comfortable and enjoyable mm-hmm. and just having fun for me is kind of the main criteria of course of course it is but <laughs> I've i just think a, i just think it's already really good i've done a few <laughs> flying coasters now and yeah. i don't understand why one of the best elements about air galactica is the fly to lie yeah. And the mm-hmm. fact that you really go on your back that whole turn. And I don't understand why not more of the other flying coasters use that because it's so cool. And what I also found mm-hmm. interesting was that when you look at the ride, it doesn't seem that fast. But once you're riding it, then it feels a, a whole lot of different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it still just... remains one of the the best coasters in the UK as well for me. Do you think? I yeah. I, I really don't. It's not that I don't like it. I just don't think it's that good. <laughs> well, it depends on what you're looking for. This is true. And but especially I, yeah. the old style. I, I like the the, the airy music. <laughs> and and yeah. it had a good vibe. And even though we had to wait for 70, minute, 70 minutes to, to ride it the first time. Oh, my God. Because it broke down. Uh, but luckily they got it up and running again with us still in the queue. Um, 
it 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 lived up to the expectations and now That's again true. after after uh all those years that passed it still felt pretty good i think galactica tends to have a really long or a really short queue I'm well, going really sure. it. So I mean like 20 minutes. Well or it's either like 20 minutes or like 70 minutes. Because it just depends whether they are running one station or two. Normally they run two. But if you've ever been in like an off-peak day, they run one station. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's just such a long queue. I see. And then there's Wicker Man. Great, great ride. What do you think is so great about it? Um, it's just like it's just everything like it. I don't know if there's nothing like about Wicker Man. There's not this one thing where you think this bit is so cool, this bit is so cool. It's just everything about it just kind of works. Like it, the soundtrack, the theming, the pre-show, the way the ride is. It's like intense but not too intense. It ru- it feels really fast when you're on it, but like not to the point where that's the only thing you can focus on. I think it just is. It just works really well together. I think it's a good ride, but the pre-show is just a waste of time. What it the hell is like the up. best bit? No, I literally was sitting there thinking, "This is just so boring. Let me ride the Wicker Man." Um, and whose idea was it to do wood and fire? I think that's a crazy idea, but that makes it more thrilling. It's yeah, that's that's the point. But I think I think that is something to be said. Um, I mean, I haven't done Wicker Man, but Merlin in general, the pre-shows aren't normally that great the other one that really springs to my mind is zufari at chessington that has probably one of the worst pre-shows oh, that i've true. ever experienced <laughs> in my life so um i mean i yeah they've I actually got rid of it now have they oh. yeah they might when have one really of the best it. drivers soon though yeah they may do. <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll see we'll see but uh yeah for me wicker man um Obviously, it's one of the GCI coasters that I... Most recent GCI coasters that I've ridden. I've, I, yeah. And if you have ridden Troy, if you've ridden Woden, even if you've ridden Joris and the Drak, it, it, the, the layout and the, the thrill level, it felt more like a family wooden coaster for me compared to those. Mm, it's, not, it's not tall. It's not big. One of the best bits about like Woody's tends to be the first drop. Yeah, but it, so, it's not always the stats that make a coaster really good. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. But and, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is one of my favorite things about like wooden coasters is the first drop and then into the big airtime hill. Mm-hmm. And then after that, a lot of them just kind of fizzle out. Like for me, the kind of dream wooden coaster would be like the start of Colossus Kampfdigaganten and then just then Wicker Man. <laughs> like oh maybe like where the helix is just then just mm-hmm. do wicker man i did love the be amazing i did love the pre-show though and the whole story yeah. around the ride and it's a it's a unique theme and and uh that, that was a pretty good choice of of alton towers and they really yeah. tried to market that like they did the other secret weapons even though it's not that spectacular compared um yeah but uh, it's too it's too bad though that the fire effects don't always work. Yeah, um, it's kind of just a it's, it's a classic Merlin thing. Just play bingo with what effects are on or off, or whether it works or not. <laughs> I, I mean, they like said they it was work. technical, you know, and I totally understand that. I totally get it. You know, something's you know need fixing. It's going to take them more than that time. But mm-hmm. it's just a shame that the newest ride is literally closed. It's closed quite a lot, isn't it? A lot, honestly. It's had a lot of yeah. problems this year with Command. Yeah. I think yeah. they even retracked a section of it. And it also because has a pretty interesting lift hill with the little nod in. This is just because, yeah, because it starts steeper than mm-hmm. it finishes, right? Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. basically because by doing it that way, they had to dig less ground out because of the height restriction it okay. starts underground and if you notice the hump stops as you sort of get over the ground again mm-hmm. so by doing that they had to excavate less pretty much okay yeah but i just want to 
quickly also go back to Nemesis to why I like it so much is yeah. after 20 years it's still smooth the yeah. the way it's built into the rock work uh, in, into the um, a little valley 20, 26 and, years already thinking about it okay yeah. <laughs> time flies um, <laughs> and then I, I the first time I wrote it it still had the red waterfall which I thought was really cool oh, okay um, that was turned off the other day they've turned it off now which is really sad so that was like wait Wait, what, the whole waterfall's off? Yeah, or honestly, I went the other day, it's, it's all dried up, it's all been turned off. Okay. Which is sad. sad. I know. I wonder, though, if that's just they've drained it so they can clean it before Scarefest, because what a lot of the parks do, in like the Merlin parks, is before like the Halloween event, because in this country, the Halloween event gets so many, like Fright Nights at Thor Park is so busy, Scarefest is so busy, Like it's like almost like the, the big time of the year. I think Thor Park makes like 50% of their revenue over Fright Nights. Mm-hmm. so like what a lot of them do is if you go at the start of the Halloween events everything is working everything is clean everything is perfect so I wonder if maybe they've drained it to clean it and then they've put mm. the water back in for Scarefest I don't know I don't like I'm, this isn't me saying that's what's happening mm-hmm. I ho- I'm mm-hmm. hoping really to be honest with you mm. and then there's also the layout that's that was designed yes, for so the yeah. area and, and that that's the type of coasters I really like that they Big up your Maudley. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I, I kind of fell in love when I wrote it the first time, mm. and I still did, did the second time. So. It's an amazing ride. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. It's hard to sum it up, really, isn't it? If if you if you had to explain Nemesis to someone who doesn't like isn't really a big roller coaster person or something, how how would you describe Nemesis? A funny song. <laughs> like, why, why, why is Nemesis better than Nemesis Inferno to a non-coaster person? <laughs> okay, right. Not it's to like, me. Oh, <laughs> terrible. Why do we have to have James here? <laughs> Just to provide the controversial opinion. <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. We can rename you Mr. Controversial. So next time we do this, we can be like, James is here, but we're going to call him Mr. Controversial. I thought it was Kai, actually, but... I, I think me and James have the complete opposite opinions about everything. <laughs> Some of Seems which are controversial. Like a... so it's like, he, if, if he doesn't have a controversial opinion, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, what is your problem with Nemesis, James? I, I do you actually have a problem with it, or is it just you think Nemesis Verno is better? You could still say it's amazing. <laughs> or do, oh, oh, he's got a problem. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry? Do, do you have a problem with Nemesis? Or oh, do no, I don't have a problem with Nemesis. I liked it. I thought it was a good coaster. I just, I think maybe, maybe what I thought was maybe, um, maybe perhaps I thought it was a little bit overhyped. Because everyone goes mm. around saying it's, the be- loads of people say it's the best coaster in the world. Obviously, lots of people say it's the best coaster in the UK. So I kind of just really set my expectations up high. Mm-hmm. And yeah. often, for me, when I do that, then I don't enjoy the ride as much as if I had low expectations. Um, mm-hmm. So another th- coaster, which I had really high expectations for, was Helix uh, mm-hmm. in Sweden. Oh, really? And that completely let me down as well. So I think kind of similar thing happened with Nemesis. It's not that I don't like it. It's just I thought it was going to be more awesome i don't hmm. know did you do a a night ride in front seat on helix though i've done a night ride i haven't done front seats so okay because that can't say that because that made a lot that made the coaster a lot better actually but it, it's it's sad that a coaster needs a specific timing of that's the what day. i was about to say like if you need to say have you ridden it in this seat at this time in this season? Then, you know, it's like a lot of people say, oh, have you ridden Shambhala while the fireworks are going off? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think any ride while fireworks going off in the background is pretty Quite spectacular. Cool. Mm-hmm. Like, even if you hate the ride, you'd still, like, my least favorite roller coaster is Bandit at Movie Park, right? It's all, oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> But if I was riding Bandit with fireworks going off like in front of me, 
I would probably put it as one of my best coaster experiences ever. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like... <laughs> even um, if your neck is about to break, okay. Even if my spine is being jackhammered, it's still amazing. But the difference with Shambhala is it's good in whatever yes, this is whatever yes. <laughs> setting. But um, no, Helix, Helix, um, I don't know what it is. I found it a bit, just a bit underwhelming. I, I think I just expected some insane coaster and... I love the way I love the way it interacts with the landscape. I think that is mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, and there's some really cool moments, like one of the airtime hills, and then you, the paths underneath you, and you kind of dive down the hill, and that's really cool. But just as the whole coaster, and maybe that's just a thing with the Mac Mega coasters in general. They're just, you know, Helix. I thought it was going to be this big thrill coaster, but more it was kind of more of a family ride. I thought. Than it didn't really. age well either. Yeah, but I, I like it. I like it. It's not so I don't like it. Just mm-hmm. it's not, it's not, it's not my favorite coaster. And that's kind of the same how I feel with Nemesis. I think it's a, a decent coaster, just not the best thing I've been on. Mm-hmm. Um, James, do you prefer Helix or Icon? This is a really hard question because <laughs> I think um, I think Helix is better, but personal enjoyment, I prefer Icon. Um, is it maybe you just have like. I think there can be this thing. So if you went on Helix expecting it to be amazing and it wasn't, and if you went on Icon expecting it to be all right and it was good, something about that will make you prefer Icon, if that makes sense. And that's different, but there are coasters which I go with really high expectations and then it meets it. So Mm. like Taron or uh, Untamed, you know, I had high expectations for those and then that was met. Yeah. Um, But... For something like Helix, I think I had high expectations, and then they weren't mm-hmm. there, which makes it seem a lot worse than it actually is. Yeah, you're right. So, so I think, yeah, an icon was was underplayed by a lot of people, in my opinion. So then I was like, wow, this is actually is actually way better than expected. Hmm. Let's see. Is there a park <laughs> that I'm missing in the UK? What, to, like, hot or not yet? Mm-hmm. Uh, Dreamland. But that's just because I love Dreamland, not I because it's Dreamland. a major park. It's not a major okay, park, Okay, no. Dreamland. Hot. Emma? Um, I've never been. I'm afraid. But, but from, from what you've from seen. From the oppressions that you've heard. Uh... I mean, I want to go. It's definitely on my list. Um, mm. I, yeah, hot. I think hot. Yeah, I definitely say hot as well. Um, just having the oldest coaster in the country, I think, is and it's got the brake man on it as well, mm-hmm. which is always something unique to you know these sort of heritage parks. And it's nice because it's by the seaside, so that kind of gives it more charm. Um, it's just got quite a bit of a sort of a carnival feel, um, mm-hmm. but it's good, but not it's overdone. Good yeah, it's not overdone at all. It's like just it's just good vibes, man. Um, and there is another big park. Well, I say big park, but probably medium-sized park that we missed as well. Uh, Drayton Manor. Oh, Drayton. Oh, wow, yeah. I was there yeah. last week. So oh, yeah. I, was, that one. I was there last week as well. So. <laughs> we totally forgot about Drayton. So uh, that's a it's... not straight away then, isn't it, really, to be honest? <laughs> it's kind of true. This is another one that I was on my to-do list this year. Because uh, this year I was basically going to like do all of the UK parks that I um, hadn't done, like all of the kind of big ones, basically everything we've mentioned here that I hadn't done. Then COVID happened, so it didn't happen. But Drayton Manor looks like an absolute not, except except Apocalypse and Stormforce Ten. Is that what it's called, Stormforce Ten? That is what it's called, right? The water ride. Yeah, the log flume thing. Yeah, that is yeah. Storm, Stormforce <laughs> Turn. Yeah, we've all a bit confused there. <laughs> yeah, them two, they look good, but the rest of it looks... Uh, um, I'd say Apocalypse is, is really good. It's a really good drop tower. Um, mm. I actually like Drayton Manor. I'm going to say hot for Drayton Manor in a weird way, in a weird way, because I think it is lacking investment and it's a bit run down. But at the same time, I think it's just got quite a unique atmosphere. Um, mm-hmm. There's lots of things 
not great about it. For example, the Buffalo Coaster is one of the <laughs> Isn't that like, weirdest, weirdest, weirdest Very coasters weird. I've been on ever. But then, and then Shockwave is like this one of the staples of the park, but it's really just not that comfortable, and it's just kind of crazy, uh, which kind of makes it so unique because obviously it's a stand-up coaster. Um, Why do we have no stand-up coasters in Europe? Because they're not that good. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> there is another one. Okay. There's, there yeah, there's a, a, there's a weird um, Togo one. Isn't I've there? ridden it, but when it was still in Canada's Wonderland. And yeah, it's pretty uh, weird. It, the transitions are literally, you go from this, from straight up to straight vertical. So it's uh, horizontal, sorry. Uh, um, that doesn't sound great. Weird transitions, but I kind of still liked it. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Shockwave for me was kind of like, I did it once and I didn't feel like I needed to go on it again. I feel like I'd had mm. the experience <laughs> of doing Shockwave. Mm. Um, but no, I think the park is, is, is quite nice. The way it's set up around the lake, and I think it's quite nice. And then obviously, like, they've got the Thomas Land, which is good for kids, I think. And they've got the zoo, uh, which kind of probably needs a redevelopment. Um, right. But on the whole, I think it's... It's a nice park, but it just it needs to spruce up, and hopefully the new ownership will will kind of put it back in the right direction because it wouldn't be nice to see it get some more investment. They did say that when Looping Group took it over, they said they wanted to keep it very family orientated, but they also did then say they were going to invest quite heavily. They want it to be their like flagship park. So really? I do think I do think we're going to see a lot of stuff happening at Drayton Manor, um, mm. but personally, me, it's not. Um, I went there, I've wanted to go for years. I'm not a huge Thomas the Tank Engine fan at all whatsoever. <laughs> so obviously I didn't enjoy that at all whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, no, I love Thomas the <laughs> Tank Engine. So uh, for, that, for me, that was a selling point. Um, I, Storm Force 10 was insane. You just <laughs> literally get drenched. Um, it was ridiculous. And it was freezing cold that day as well. So it was pretty um, unwelcomed. Um, Shockwave, I really liked. I went on it twice. The first time I thought, oh, I, like, I was so scared. It was terrifying because the, like, the restraint system on it's really weird. Yeah. Um, it's very strange. And the second time I thought, well, I'm going to fly out of this. So I thought, that's, that's that over. I don't need to do that again. That's, that's what I thought. I thought I was going to come out. Yeah, That's why I didn't like it because I thought I went, you go down the first drop and that was fine. And then the loop was fine. And then all of a sudden from the zero G roll to the end, you just think you're going to get chucked out. And I just don't like that feeling. <laughs> no, I think the restraint system could do with updating, maybe, um, just to make me feel a little bit safer. But the rest of the park's really quite cute. Um, I didn't ride Apocalypse because I'm absolutely terrified of drop towers. Uh, but my sister said it was amazing. Um, but the rest of the park's pretty cute. Like you said, the zoo could do with maybe a little bit more upkeep. But it is a nice little zoo. Um, I think overall it's a family park. It's definitely one to visit. Um, but it does need some improvement, 100%. But definitely, yeah. I don't know, hot or not, I'm really, I'm, that's torn. Not. Let's go not. Um, three, is that the first park that's got three knots? Might no, be. Flamingo Land got three. But, Lego um, Land got three knots. Has anything it's got def- three? Oh, Haunted House got three hots. Yeah. And but it's interesting that and <laughs> <laughs> and but before bad. twenty before twenty twenty, none of you had visited Drayton Manor. That's uh-huh. interesting. I also mm. I always also skipped it because it wasn't I couldn't fit it in on our trips. But on the other hand like I thought, I thought the stand-up was interesting, but maybe not enough to appeal me to go there. Uh, so maybe in the future, if they put something else instead of the X car coaster, that might be. Uh, I wouldn't go back. Reason not to visit. unless they made some major investment in the park. I wouldn't go back, and I think because none of us have visited since before this year, that speaks a thousand words, really. To be honest, because mm-hmm. it's and not we actually almost forgot that far. About it. Yeah, yeah, well, unfortunately... There I mean, is it's... one other park we forgot, though. Uh-oh. Adventure Island. Hmm. Uh... <sighs> <laughs> Let's see. Both <laughs> Emma and James are, like, an hour. shaking their heads. <laughs> and... Yeah. 
it's literally an hour and a half away from me. I could drive there tomorrow if I really wanted to. But every time I think about it, I think, nah, I'll just stay here. If I'm I, honest. I went to Adventure Island last year, actually, in the summer. And it's nice because it's on the seaside and it's a really sunny yeah. day. So we had a great day out at the seaside. But the park itself is... It's okay. It's okay. It's not bad, but it's kind of... It doesn't really have much of a selling point. And the Euro fight is not anything to rave about. So it's, it's fun, a, though. Yeah, it's good fun. It's, not, it's good fun. But I think um, the, the highlight of it for me was actually their new flat ride called Axis, which is mm. kind of like a, mm, um, a looping... I don't know how to describe it, like an inverted swing type thing. A gyro swing. Yeah, try <laughs> swing with um, inversion. With inversion, yeah. So yeah. and that that I thought was really good and it was good fun. And the park has has an alright atmosphere. Just it's probably not the one. It's not one of the parks that I would p- rush back to unless they had a no. big new development. Mm-hmm. I I I don't know whether to hold or not. It actually. It looks more like a fairground, to be honest. It's it, basically it has a that fairground, vibe. yes. It has that vibe. On the topic, though, quickly, of gyro swings, can mm. I just say that, in my genuine, honest opinion, the best flat ride in this country is Pendulum at Dreamland Margot. That was closed when I went. Literally, mate, it is... It's broken. Mega. Like, it is <laughs> insane. It's Which, literally uh, just as, who built it? It's it's a Zamperla okay. um, a MIDI Discovery with inversion. So, like, it's not that great on paper. I don't know what it is, man, but something about how they run it, it is insane. Like, I blacked out <laughs> on it. And it's the, I think it's the only thing I've ever blacked out on. It's the same uh, Paulton's Park are getting one of them as well, but they're not making They're getting the bigger invert. one that doesn't invert. Yeah. Um, okay. So, but I think that will be all right as well. Um mm. For me, the best flat ride in the UK was Slammer. Now that's gone, mm. I don't know what my favourite flat ride is. Um, I don't really have one anymore, but it's just kind of sad. But <laughs> <laughs> what, what about, like... Yeah, so my fa- my favourite is Pendulum. Second, Ramesses Revenge, but it's gone. So then Detonator, then Rush. I like Detonator. Mm. Detonator's amazing! Especially if you don't expect to have such a thrilling experience from a little drop yeah. tower. That was like, yeah. whoa. <laughs> it is the most intense drop tower in the world. So it Fact. seems. I think it's... <laughs> is it, six, it can't be six Gs. No. Five and a half. Five maybe. and a half. I see. Well, it, it was pretty fun. Um, yeah, I love it. So... I asked our uh, Instagram followers yes. what their favorite ride was in the UK. Um, which rides Have we do you, established? Which rides do you expect to are? be um, high? Um, wait, just just like quickly. Mm-hmm. Have all of us said like what our favorite ride in the UK is? I said Nemesis. Okay, Nemesis. Mine's a smiler. Yeah. Icon. James, James was icon. And Emma. Oh, this is really hard because. <laughs> just pick. Uh, okay, pick Galassica, for continuity. Galassica, Galassica. Oh, Interesting. Jesus. <laughs> I understand. I fully Shush. understand. But what do the peoples say? Yes. Um, uh, okay, so it's Coaster Kings. I'm thinking about the kind of. Oh, this is really tough. Did everyone put roller coasters or did they put like dark rides and flat rides? Uh, there are two other, uh, three other rides, yeah. I will say Nemesis is obviously going to be up there uh, as people's favourite. Yeah, so I think the big ones will be Icon, Nemesis and The Smiler. Um, and Wicker Man. Uh, and possibly stealth, actually, because stealth is quite a, a big one for people in the UK, actually, as yeah, well. We haven't so. really spoken about stealth, have we? No, we haven't, but I think that's a secret, mm-hmm. like, sneaky winner. Yeah, okay. And then if there's some non-coasters in there, um, I don't know, but maybe, maybe... Um, I don't know why, but Maelstrom at Drayton Manor seems to get quite a lot of hype, so I kind of feel like someone could have dropped that in there. 
Well, um, why don't you let us know, Sven? Well, um, someone said the one inside Madame Tussauds. <laughs> Tell me more. Oh, the, what's it called? The, the London, London bus. What's it? It's got a name. London taxi something. The little taxi ride. Yeah, I mean, see, I yeah. love that. So. That is a great ride. <laughs> is that, it, does that count? What is it? Yeah, it's a dark ride. What, what, it's a okay. dark ride. You, you go through like scenes of like English history, should we say? Yeah, English history. In a taxi. Yeah, it's cute. But do you know what has a, a good little dark ride as well, actually? Cadbury World up in Birmingham. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think they've got a little dark ride, which is quite good fun as well. Um, the, the, the weird Madame Two Swords ride is like, it really like heavily reminded me of Spaceship Earth at Epcot. Okay. Like a lot. Like it really, really reminded me of Spaceship Earth. It That's might even be the same ride system. Okay. Well, someone else said the shipyard dar- dark ride of Titanic. I don't even know where that is. That will be in Liverpool, no? They have the Titanic <laughs> Museum in Liverpool. And okay. I didn't even know there was a ride in the Titanic Museum. <laughs> yeah, I can't comment on that. <laughs> okay. Is it in Liverpool? Or is it in Belfast? I, I kind of thought it was in Belfast. I think they might have one in each, but maybe not the same. Maybe. Mm. I, you know what? Who knows? But anyway, the Titanic something. Um, okay. Not what we expected. but um, <laughs> is, you know. Someone yeah. doesn't surely think that's the best dark ride in the country. Not only the best, I, I asked for the best ride in the country. Yes, and the, the that best was the ride. Reply. So you're telling me that this guy <laughs> believes that, or, or gal, believes that the Titanic, whatever, unnamed, they didn't even know the name of it. It's that, you know, <laughs> that great. It's better. Or maybe it was just me that didn't copy it right. Uh, hang on. Oh. Hang on. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'm that you, was then. the reply. Okay, well, sure. Well, Okay, yeah, that's all we have to say. Moving on, moving (laughs) on. Next. So, one of the... Oh, ship... Yeah, it's Shipyard Dark Ride Titanic Belfast. It's in Belfast. (laughs) Oh, okay. So it's called Shipyard or something. Anyway. (laughs) um, (laughs) Nemesis was on there, but about the same amount of people mentioned it, like Wicker Man, like Stealth, like Mm. Swarm... That seems okay. to be one we didn't talk about either. Swarm's um, amazing. That's my second favorite Swarm. in yeah. the country. My favorite thing about Swarm was when I was able to ride it backwards. Yeah, that made such that gave a difference. It a, yeah, totally. Really? But but in terms of operations, that was a nightmare because they had they should have had well they couldn't really have a separate queue for it. But obviously, mm-hmm. in they the station, though, it was such a mess. Or did they have a separate queue and that was they what did, the problem yeah, was? They did, yeah. There was a Braver Backwards queue. Oh, yeah. The, there was some so logistical nightmare with it, basically. The, the team had to run four queues. The main queue, the Braver Backwards queue, the Fast Track queue, and the Disabled queue. And the Swarm Station isn't that big. like, So it just it, it didn't work. Yeah. It is a nice station, though, with the... Upside down. It used uh, to be. Trailer. It used to be, but it looks really, really bad now. <laughs> oh, all like of, a really all of the wooden beams, like really bad. Like it annoys me. I want to go in there with a paint bucket myself. It's that bad. <laughs> okay. Well, it is back. a destroyed church. No, no, but like, yes, it's a destroyed church, and destroyed churches don't have visible bits of. Um, Oh, man. fiberglass and they also mm-hmm. don't have s- obvious steel support beams where the wood's been removed and they, they also don't have plaster visible where where like bits of theming have been taken off the wall mm-hmm. mm. and going back to the effects talk i think swarm was one in the beginning which had loads of really cool effects and i think over the years the they've just sort of disappeared i don't know if they still use them or not but um, i this year, I've seen, like, none of them. Last year, at one point or another, I saw all of them, and I might have had one ride where, like, most of them worked. But on the Swarm, when you, if you were lucky and you got the fireball yeah, and you were at yeah. the front, then you just get that, like, wave of heat in yeah. your face. Mm-hmm. That was really, really cool. Um, but, but you had to be really lucky to get that because... It's ev- it, when it's on, it's every three trains. Yeah, but when it's on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I have to correct myself, actually. 
it's not none of the effects I've seen working this year. The steam, like the smoke that comes out of the plane is pretty reliable. I've seen that working most times. It's the fire that hasn't worked. I haven't seen it once this year. I don't think I've seen the wa- I, either of the water jets this year either. Oh, okay. that's sad. And I do think you think it's the... one of the best wing coasters in Europe? It's it's my favourite. I, I was kind of tossing between that and um, Flug de Morning, but I think that the Swarm's better. I haven't done enough wing coasters, but I quite enjoy Phoenix at Toverland. Mm-hmm. Um, but also I prefer the theme of Phoenix to the Swarm, really? just because I don't really like the whole destruction <laughs> theme so much. <laughs> but, no, I, think, I think Swarm has equally good theming. It's just for me... I prefer sort of more of an upbeat theme yeah. mm-hmm. um, for a roller coaster. Um, but, but they're both really good. The actual coaster, they're both, they're both good coasters. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. they're both enjoyable. I still prefer Raptor because it has more of the near-miss elements. I really want to try Raptor. And also, yeah, obviously the weather in Italy helps as well. And the way it is, the really the heart of the park, uh, okay. and the green. Um, is Raptor themed to dinosaurs? It's. You can get that vibe, but it's still a monster instead of a dinosaur. See, I didn't. I never thought it was a dinosaur, and then someone said the dinosaur theming, like oh, the dinosaur cages, and I was like, mm. what? I swore it was just like a weird but, monster. But isn't a raptor a dinosaur though? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess. But the 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 size. train, the layout of the train is obviously not a dinosaur. Yeah, I was. <coughs> so I was going to say, it, yeah, the train just looks like an alien thing. Mm-hmm. It it looks pretty similar to me, I think, to the swarm, right? Or is it? They, just I think me? they just edited it to make the swarm's train. Mm-hmm. And then, like, fl- uh, flew to the and the swarms train Mm. is the exact same except the paint job and i think like do you know the wing coasters like the fiberglass is like a couple of there's like different pieces of it Mm -hmm. i think the very middle piece is different okay that might be um but uh the two top rated rides in the uk are on one hand the smiler and also, Saw. Saw? Saw. Oh, what? what? Do you know what? A lot of people love Saw. No. I see why. I love the Saw movies, so I love Saw. And I love Gerstlauer's, and it's a great ride. But. We didn't even mention Saw. We haven't spoken about mm-hmm. Saw. We once. literally. No. We should have done, though. It, <laughs> We've ignored it. But this is the thing. Okay, yeah, we haven't spoken about Saw, but we also haven't, like, really uh, uttered much of a word about, like, Stealth or Nemesis Inferno, really? Or, we really you know. kind of slated Thor Park and then just <laughs> <laughs> And every so time true. someone says Chessington, we all get a little bit of emotion going through. Yeah. Us, so, you know. The kind of general gist is Alton, Alton Towers, we were all like, yes, the park is great. And then the coasters, we were like, okay, some are good, some are not good. Blackpool Pleasure Beach was a argument. <laughs> Chessington was everyone <laughs> speaking about how much they love it. <laughs> and yeah, thought, and we just slated Thor Park. So overall, um, yeah. Overall, we've established that the best park in the UK is definitely Chessington. I do remember that my ride on Saw, the on front row, the first time was really yeah. good, better than front expected. Row is so much better. And then on second row, it really hurt. <laughs> it's really rattly. Well, I think it also depends what car you get on yeah, because it really some does. of them, yeah, have might be. I don't know, worn out wheels or whatever it is. And it can be really, really uncomfortable. And that's what I don't like about it. But I think it's got like quite a nice little layout. Um, but yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I love the indoor bit. Yeah, the indoor bit is the best bit by far. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I thought you were going to say nice theming. And I was going to be like, okay, questionable. No, <laughs> yeah, <that's> I, I <laughs> don't. It's nice. Do you know what? So many of the props in the queue line and in the station, everything are, are actually from the movies. The, the the Billy the Puppet dolls, I'm like ninety percent sure, are f- like the ones they filmed with. That's it. Terrifying. Terrifying. 
Yeah, so cool though. I don't know. Like, I'm mm. a massive fan of the movies. It's like my favorite horror franchise. So mm-hmm. it's fun for me to like be like, oh, this is this and this is that. And and you, if you know like what it is, like, do you know the Heartline role is supposed to be the bathroom scene from Saw One? Like that's what it goes over. So I guess um, okay. Because if if you look at it from like Samurai, you can see like the urinals on the wall. Yeah. It's a little bit grim, though, for <laughs> theme park, isn't it? To have, you know, do you know what I mean? That's just. It's a, a bit random for them to have that there, if that makes sense. That's, that's the only thing I would say. I, I think it's an all right coaster, but I wouldn't put it up there as the top because it's not my kind of theming at all. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. The good thing about it is we've really, like, slated a lot of the parks for, like, oh, none of the effects work anymore. It's been maintained <laughs> so badly. Do you know what? Saw the ride. You can't fault it. All the effects still work. That like, is true. All of them. Um, like they even like redid all the UV lighting this year and stuff. Like mm-hmm. they have really kept on top of Saw. I don't know if that's because it's an IP. They have like a yeah. responsibility to like mm-hmm. they have like a rule that they have to. But they mm-hmm. really have been like Saw is not incredibly different now to how it was in its opening gear from like a theming point of view. But I mm-hmm. think I'd say mm-hmm. as well, Saw is probably, for a lot of people, it's the coaster that everyone knows about at Thorpe Park. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. it is their staple attraction, so they've got to and keep stealth. it... Yeah, stealth as well, but I think, I think more people... I think, I think more people know riding Saw and more people know, like, looking at stealth. Yeah, exactly. So I mm-hmm. think I think it's um, <laughs> it's definitely a staple of the park since it's been there, so I think that's mm-hmm. kind of... Yeah, it's one of the most, more popular attractions, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have to say, I really enjoyed my tour in the UK. Not being able to go because of COVID right now, uh, it did help a bit for to plan for future visits. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. <laughs> What's yeah, the first I park you visit now in the UK? Like, uh, I'm... I'm I would say looking forward to them and you haven't got anything planned, but it's like when you come back, you should definitely like hit a lot of the, the the parks we spoke about that like even maybe you didn't really know much about like Chessington. A mm-hmm. lot of it is so new to you. So you should definitely mm-hmm. hit Chessie and yeah, go back to Thorpe just to be disappointed. Mm-hmm. No, not really. It's a good park. <laughs> uh, and then you can go to Warren Towers to ride the best rides in the country. And then you can go to Rust Bucket Beach or whatever it's called. And then, <laughs> or what's it called? We love it because it's nostalgia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Black the other pool. Night? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be. It'll be interesting to see the new Valhalla, though. Yes, for sure. I'm actually excited for that. Mm, me too. <laughs> looks well. I say it looks good, but we've not seen anything, hardly updates or anything, have we? So- so- mm-hmm. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> reimagining. Yeah. What does Blackpool Pleasure Beach reimagining something look <laughs> like? They literally said they were sprinkling a bit of magic onto it, which <laughs> didn't make any sense <laughs> in what my was the brain. the last ride they sprinkled a bit of magic onto? <laughs> but also, it's not like infusion. a very magical ride, is it? That's no. not really the theme of it at all. So <laughs> I know, it's so just, silly. It doesn't line does it hmm. yeah, it should be like we're stabbing some magic into this ride <laughs> <laughs> we're beating some magic into Valhalla <laughs> but no Valhalla Valhalla before obviously it closed it is it was like I on one hand I love it and on the other hand I can't stand it because I can't stand getting that wet but if all the effects <laughs> were on which is quite rare yeah, it's like yeah we slated Merlin for it but yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, if if all the effects were on, it is incredible. Like, I, especially at the end with those big blasts of fire and everything, yeah. and then you've got the cold mm-hmm. room looks as well. Awesome. It looks um, awesome. It's and of awesome. course, the water vortex. Oh, please go through the tunnel of water. Oh yeah, <laughs> the tunnel yeah. of water goes through you. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit. Of, there's a bit on the ride as well, which I only ever experienced once. But it's I think it's about halfway through, and there's a drop. And there's fire like in the, in the, like in the trough of the water, that and then it insane. goes off just before you splash. 
I, I only ever had that once, and that was actually quite a scary moment. That sounds so <laughs> cool. That sounds really cool. I think that effect has been broken for years now. That was like the first time I ever rode it, maybe six, seven years ago. And since right. then, right. since then, I think it's been off. So right, right. Let's hope mm-hmm. they fix that effect when they reimagine it. But we'll see what happens. What does do, okay? What do you actually think it means? Like, are the effects going to be replaced with like like for like replacements, or is the fire room going to be replaced with flashing orange lights? Like, what does this? Because a lot of the point of doing it was to make the ride like more like cheaper to run for one because i know that if the fire works consistently it costs half a million a year in gas so okay so they wanted to make it more sustainable more so it can actually run like making the money and more reliable so are they essentially going to turn the fire room into yeah flashing orange lights or do you actually do you think it's going to be like fire effects again and like stuff like that or is is it really going to be like Damp down a bit. I think. I don't think oh, sorry, you go, Emma. <laughs> I was just going to say I don't think they can change anything really too much because it is, you know, it's been voted the best water ride in the UK. In um, the world. And I, in the world. Well, yeah. you know, by Golden yeah, Ticket. Well, no, there we go. Um, so it will lose its status if it changes too much. It will lose that status, and I think that's it, quite I a think high it will. status. I think it will. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I don't know. I don't know, but. <sighs> The thing is, it is so expensive to run that mm. I don't know what will happen with all the effects. Um, I wonder whether they have thought about potentially using screens instead of some of the yeah. older animatronics, because I know that the owners of Blackpool have quite a good relationship with the Mac family, so they'll, mm-hmm. be, they'll be quite on it with the, potentially the latest technology. So it might be possible that we'd see some s- greens in there as well as animatronics as well it's getting see a new boats as well right i i've assumed so because the old boats got so flooded you would literally sit <laughs> in the bath of water <laughs> maybe like what if expanding on your theory james we get like mac boats there's no reason why mac couldn't make a boat that fits it we'll have to see i know i know that yeah i'm definitely i know that the owners the thompsons are close with the mac so um so they're always trying to work with them to That's come up fair. with new ideas so we'll yeah. s- we can see what happens there it's a good theory i think you're right we could see screens i didn't even think of mm-hmm. that yeah i think screens could be a it's big interesting. part i think that might make it cheaper to run that is the only mm-hmm. thing i'm, I'm yeah, saying yeah. is we'll have to see what they do i i personally don't think it needed much in terms of changing but but because it's so expensive i kind of understand mm-hmm. um why but we'll just have to see what they do with it really Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think it might be good material once it's ready for a future podcast then (laughs) yeah for sure like we could we could there's so many topics we've like Mm -hmm. just brushed the surface on in this video and and Mm -hmm. sort of video i said podcast and that's good it's like the first uk um kind of podcast so i think it's good that we've almost done like a broad thing we spoke about all the parks we've Mm -hmm. dabbled into themes because we could spend two hours talking about secret weapon um nine is it nine yeah it's nine wait yeah nine's next right yes it is sorry (laughs) we could spend um, i was waiting for someone from the uk to respond so (laughs) (laughs) we could um we, we could spend two hours talking about the future of Valhalla like there's so many uh, mm-hmm. things we've dabbled on that we really could like expand on so uh, mm-hmm. there is a comments feature right on like yes. Apple Podcasts and stuff if you uh, have made it this far and if you're interested comment down below <laughs> any theme we have like slightly dipped our toes into that you would like us to fall Valhalla ourselves mm-hmm. into uh, and mm-hmm. I'm sure um, we could we could talk about it yes and if you don't do it in the comments, then you can also uh, follow us on all our social media, on Instagram, on Facebook. Not only European Coaster Kings, but also the Coaster Kings and all of the other members in our family. Besides uh, leaving comments on the channels, you can also subscribe to our podcast. And uh, on our website, we have indeed some nice new articles from all of the members that are here 
today. Like, yeah. what is the top 10 in Blackpool? How did uh, someone from the UK experience a visit to Europa Park or Holiday Park? And, mm -hmm. of course, about Chessington. Yes. Big up, <laughs> Chessy. <laughs> Alrighty. So, um, thank you everyone for listening. And I wish you a very pleasant day. Bye, everyone. See you around. Thanks, folks. guys. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.